All right, the button is hit. It is December 27th. The Xbox Two Podcast is back after a week break. I'm one of your hosts, Randall Thor 19 man with the million, and with, with me, as always, my co-host with the co-most, Jez Corden of Windows Central. Uh, what's going on, buddy? How you been? How was your How was your holiday? Oh, oh man, Christmas is it's more exhausting when you're an adult, isn't it? Yeah, Having to visit yeah. people, got to do all the presents, not much time to actually, you know, chill. But I did a bit of chilling, I guess. How was your Christmas? You want the uh, you want the the PR the PR response, or do you want the honest to God's truth? Uh, uh the rand response. The rand response. So that means the truth. Uh, my Christmas was horrible. Oh, oh, why is that? My Christmas was absolutely horrible because I was in so much pain. I <clears throat> did something <clears throat> in my <throat> back. I don't know. Like I think I pulled a muscle in my back, Oof. and that back whole, pain sucks, man. Yeah, the whole day I was just I I couldn't like sit like right. I would just get these like flaring pains in my back. It, it was it was a rough day. It, it like I was like popping Bayer, which is like extra th- strength, like you know medicine to kind of uh, <laughs> you know quell the pain a little bit. Uh, mm. Put a, had a heating pad on my my back. Oh man, I, it was probably the absolute worst Christmas I've ever had in my entire life. Um, getting old, man. We're yeah, getting, getting old. old. Getting old. Didn't get any presents. Um, oh, you got a present from me. What? It was a bit early. Pokemon. Po- Pokemon isn't exactly what I would call a present. That's that more. Counts, of, right? That's more of coal. No. Um, that's that's coal, Jazz. You know, uh, oh, crap. You, you're basically Hang killing on. me I've with, lost with your Pokemon. Around. One moment. Oh, he lost my he lost my uh, my audio. Yeah. So, anyways, my Christmas uh, could have been much better. I hope you guys all had a fantastic holiday, though. Um, much better than mine. Hope you got what you guys you know wanted, and if you're you know you got kids, hope they had a great time because that's what it's all about: being with family, uh, seeing the joy on other people's faces when you give them an amazing present and things like that just for me it was uh yeah i didn't really do much i kind of uh kind of just laid around sat around um didn't do anything because i really couldn't um the back feels a little bit better it's still kind of a little little achy in spots uh but it definitely is much better than it was a couple days ago um testing hello jazz you ah, it w- it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a live podcast without some form of technical issue. So what happened this time, man? What what happened this time? Oh, it's okay. It, it it's just just Windows stuff. Just Windows stuff. Of course it is. Yeah. So you what? Know, so is. what? Before we get into everything, obviously you guys are in the chat. Welcome. Uh, hit the like button uh, while you're you know waiting for us to get to the topics. I want to know what how your Christmas was, Jez, and what you get and how your family was doing. Were were you in the UK or did you go back to Germany? I oh, know, I was in Germany for Christmas. Delicious food. Very very delicious food. Uh but uh, not much to report, man. Just, you know, all the Christmas prep work you have to do. Uh, there were some f- interesting articles really popped on Windows Central over Christmas round. I, like I've, honestly, I, I keep an eye on the traffic stats, you know, from time to time because it's you know part of my job. See what people are clicking on, see what articles get trending and stuff. And um, one of my favorite articles that were trending that was trending over Christmas was, can the Xbox uh, All Digital Edition play discs? <laughs> mm. um, and and was- I would imagine a lot of people got that as a gift. Uh, because of the insane deal. I mean, they were basically selling them for a hundred bucks, right? Yep. Which is a, which is a great price. But here's the thing about that console: for that price, it's a fantastic value, right? I still yeah. have an issue with the name, not because of the moniker, you know, Xbox Sad, but because Xbox One S all digital. All digital doesn't necessarily imply that it's only digital. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, I think are technically digital. Well, all Xboxes are all digital. Like, I think a better name for the system should have been Xbox One S only digital, 
or Xbox One S no disc drive or no physical disc. Obviously, you can't put no was, in any of that yeah. stuff. But I think all digital I think, is. I was, um, like, I was thinking about this. Like, why why didn't they just call it the Xbox discless console? But that has like a negative connotation. The fact that it's lacking something. So I bet they were sitting in a board boardroom saying, "We can't call it the Xbox One S discless edition." Because that sounds like it's missing something. So let's put a positive spin on it. It's all digital. You know, and that sounds that sounds more positive. However, clearly it's more confusing because at $150, I guess a lot of people picked it up as an impulse purchase and didn't actually look into whether or not it had a disk drive. Because it isn't that obvious, to be fair. No, well, just, obviously like, the it, name, it, you know, all, yeah. all digital doesn't mean that. Um, yeah. I, I would be interested in knowing how many people actually took it back, uh, to like GameStop or Best Buy and said, I, I thought this had a disc drive, but it really didn't. You know, I want to, I wonder it, yeah, how is, many is anyone, returns they got for that. Yeah. If there's anyone listening to this who works at a gaming retailer, DM one of us and let us know if, if you had any Xbox one S all digital returns over, over the holiday period or in the coming weeks, I'm interested to know if people just straight up didn't know about it because it, it did get a lot of traffic <laughs> the past week. Um, but also, one of the our top article for the week was um, Parents' Guide to Child Account Safety on Xbox, and that'd be all our Windows content. So a lot of people probably got Xboxes over Christmas this year. It's kind of nice to see. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Uh... I mean, it is great to see, you know, whether you got an Xbox or a PlayStation. I, Switch, obviously, I think was probably the big victor, if you want to say who won. I mean, the Switch is just oh, yeah. on another level. Like, it is a... It's not maybe so much a phenomenon as the Wii was, but considering where Nintendo was with the Wii and then the abject failure known as the Wii U to then come yeah. back super strong with the Switch explosively um, strong right and it kind of leads credence to like you know people doubting if microsoft can rebound from you know this generation i think they've put obviously all the groundwork into having a great start to next gen especially when you factor in everything that they've done around like game pass and the new studios and games and all that stuff so um yeah, I don't know. Like people, people are like they, they can never come back, and it's like, well, you look at you look at the console history. Somebody always screws up, and then they always come back strong. PS3 to PS4, you know, Wii U to Switch could be Xbox's turn next gen from Xbox One to Xbox. What are we calling it? We call it just Xbox Series. We we call it just Xbox. <sighs> You know, like, I have no man. What do you what do you call it? Because presumably there's going to be a Series S and a Series X. Yeah. What do you call it? Next I gen Xbox. I get we we I can call, it call it Xbox. Xbox until then. You just call it Xbox. You got a Xbox. Se- you got a Series X. I have a Series C. You got a, I got a Series. Uh, you know, a met, the Lockhart. You know, whatever <laughs> they call that one. Um. But you know what? If if <laughs> if you missed us last week, because we were going to do the show. If you want to blame somebody for that, Jez, who uh, who who uh, called uh, called off three days in a row on me? Mm, well, by the process of deduction, mm-hmm. it would have been me. But you know, Christmas is a busy time, man. It yeah, is a Christmas. busy, busy time. Christmas is definitely um, a busy time. So the, every every yeah. day you'd be like, I think I can go, and it was like, all right, and then like two hours beforehand you're like, nope, nope, can't do it today. I'm like, all right, so we'll do a Friday, and then like three hours before we're supposed to do a Friday, Jess is like, oh, I gotta be a boyfriend right now, and I'm like, okay, and then like, let's do it Saturday, <laughs> and then Jess is like, I gotta be a boyfriend again. Sorry, I'm like, all right, well, you know, I guess I gotta, I gotta hard work, make your girlfriend disappear so we can do the podcast. It's hard, it's hard work being whipped. Yeah. yeah, but uh, shout out to Tyler really Foster like. for the super chat. He says he got a, a console for Christmas, and it was an Xbox One. Sad, as well as Pixelbit oh, G. He says call it Xbox, same way Apple reset a decade ago, which is very true. And Adam says they should call it Xtangle. Just saying, Xtangle. Xtangle. Hmm. So, um, yeah. Before we get into the whole topic discussion, which I don't even have anything typed out because that's kind of like my headspace right now 
I'm not exactly in the, the best frame of mind with my back situation. Plus, Jez, I lost three terabytes of data for my Xbox yesterday. So that's another thing that went wrong. What? How? Yeah, so I had, um, I have a one terabyte SSD hooked up to my uh, Xbox One X. And I have an eight terabyte hub, the Seagate eight terabyte hub. Um, I had that hooked up as well. And that one has about three terabytes of data on it. A whole bunch of games. And when I was uh, like cleaning around the entertainment center, I accidentally knocked it off the entertainment center. It fell down one foot. And now it's broken. Oh, dear. So it doesn't pick up. The Xbox does not pick it up. And when you plug it in, because it's like, you know, you have to plug it in. It has an AC adapter, right? All you hear is the clicking. Click, 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 click. So I was so like, that's that. That's the downside of hard drives. Is that like, it's full of mechanical bits. So there are several points of failure, whereas an SSD has less points of failure. However, a finite amount of read-write processes, from what I understand. So pros and cons, baby. Pros yeah, so then and cons. I plugged it into my PC. My PC wouldn't even recognize it. So here I am. With a hard drive that had three terabytes of data on it, cost me two hundred bucks when I bought it because I, you know, have a lot of games. I play a lot of games, and it doesn't work. Luckily, I, I have a, a four terabyte external in reserve that I don't use, so I'm obviously going to use that instead. I just bought a USB hub 3.0 on on Amazon, so I can plug in more stuff like, um, like my wireless receiver and a USB key. Uh, thumbstick so I can capture, you know, video and stuff like that while I'm playing the Xbox. But now I'm worried about uh, re-downloading uh, three terabytes of video game data, Jez. Because uh, that's going to take like a long a time. gigabyte down speed, download speed. I have 700 now, but unfortunately well, my Xbox, problem, well, my Xbox only gets 150. For whatever reason, it doesn't have get the full. ports? Yeah, everything's, everything's forwarded and stuff. Mm. But it only it only lets me download it at 150. Um, I think it I think it maxes out around there because I I can only get 150. So um. so yeah. <laughs> so not only did I have bad back pain on Christmas, the next day my big hard drive went up and and I just can't believe it died from falling one foot. We're like I'm not talking 10 feet, literally 12 inches. 12 what model was it again? Inches. Like, what? How does something like that break? And then I told my buddy about it, and he's like, oh, yeah, no wonder it broke. He dropped it a foot. I was like, oh, really? Are hard, are hard drives really that um, that sensitive? Well, I mean, it's definitely bro- broken. Like, I know people are saying, like, check the cable and all that stuff, but it's definitely broken because as soon as you plug it into power, you can all, all you hear is this click, click, click. Like, it's trying to, um, I don't know, like it's trying to read something, but it can't. What what brand is it again? Seagate, which I've been told yeah. by a bunch of people never to buy Seagate hard drives because they suck. I don't know. I've only ever had Seagate hard drives, and they've never caused me an issue. But I always hear that Seagate's not good, even yeah. though I haven't been able to repro any such issue. But it's all know. it's all about the SSD. I do have a one terabyte one, and usually when I play a game, I transfer the content from the three, you know, the eight terabyte hub to the SSD. So it, you know, loads a little bit faster. And of course, the next generation is going to have NVMe SSDs built in, which is going to be great. Uh, so I'm probably going to invest more in, um, SSDs or external SSDs going forward than just like, like huge storage, like the eight terabyte hub. So, well, that's the thing about storage next gen. Is that you'll be using it mainly to as an archive more than anything because you'll want to be running it off the NVMe SSD, otherwise you won't get the load speeds running it off your external. Yeah. Um. So before we get into everything, uh, what have you been playing? Uh, two weeks. Because mine's going to be really short, Jez. So, but what have you been up to? <laughs> I've actually played quite a few games for a change. Mm. Um. I've been playing Phoenix Point. On PC, don't know if you've heard about that. I have, I have. That was um, so that was a game that came out on PC. Was supposed to launch on day one on on Game Pass, but then it didn't. Yes. But then, it, yes. but then it came out like a month later. 
Yeah, they had some kind of issues with the UWP APIs. Shocker. Um, but they don't really line up directly with Steam, so they have to do some work. Um, but yeah, it's here now. An Xbox Game Pass. You can also buy it outright on the Microsoft Store for PC, and it's coming to Xbox a bit later, I think. Um, it's exclusive to the Epic Game Store otherwise. It's funny, because it was advertised as Epic Game Store exclusive, but it isn't. It's also on the Microsoft Store, if you don't want to give Epic Games any money. But uh, it's pretty good. It's kind of like XCOM. It's 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 like indie XCOM. It's by the same the people who made XCOM originally. And it plays very similarly. It's got some unique, interesting mechanics. You know, it's turn-based tactics, that sort of thing. Not super mind-blowing. It feels like low budget and, you know, it doesn't have the same production values as XCOM being backed by 2K and stuff like that. But it was pretty fun for a little while. Also, I got back into Monster Hunter World again. I'm, I'm, I'm approaching 400 hours played now in this game round. Jesus Christ. Like, I know what your game of the but, decade is then. <laughs> they, they keep adding new stuff to it. Like they added, they added a whole new like raid tier, like new boss battle and all new armor to get and new armor mechanics and, and all this stuff, you know? So I got back into that over the past couple of weeks. Um, playing more Pokemon. I've got almost 200 hours in Pokemon now. I'm not going to talk about that much more than that. Um, I have purchased Death Stranding, but I haven't started it yet because I have just haven't had time. Because like Death Stranding, I take it is a game you want to sit sit down and really concentrate on. Well, given it the depends. Cutscenes. It depends because some people find like uh, I saw Shinobi and Solid Rev tweet about it. Uh, Shinobi says he he much he enjoys it more as like one to two hour bursts. Uh, mm. He plays it for one to two hours and then stops. And he thinks like if he would have like really binge it, he would get tired of the game. And I've heard that from other people as well. Mm. Myself, I if I get into a game, I go hardcore. Like you know, I love a game when I'm spend like eight hours on it. So for me, I I binged Death Stranding. Like I played it mm. uh, like you know eight hours a day. You know, for the most part, when it came out until I finished it after forty hours. So it really depends. I guess it really depends on how you like. You know the gameplay, like how, because a lot of people obviously the the game, yeah, it's got the crazy story, which is great, but it's gonna live and die on how you feel about the gameplay aspect of delivering packages. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how you, f- like, if you're one of those that is gonna be like, I can't stop playing this game, or if you're like, I can only play this game for an hour, or if you like play it and like this is garbage, why does anybody play this game? Uh, it's I'm never playing it again. The thing is like. The the way the the combat not the combat the way the gameplay has been described to me it sounds like I might find it therapeutic, you know like when you just sometimes I just jump on Minecraft and I'll I'll mine cobblestone for hours and be completely content with it because I'm like yeah I'm gonna build a huge tower and that requires like an hour or two's grinding of cobblestone right. which isn't the most exciting gameplay mechanic in the universe but it's, there's something therapeutic about those kinds of tasks sometimes. I actually enjoyed that about Sea of Thieves, you know. But then in in between those sort of therapeutic voyages across the ocean, you get destroyed by a galleon full of dudes screaming racist stuff into the microphone. So <laughs> so that was less than therapeutic. But, you know, um, it is what it is. I am excited to try it out. It's just maybe I will try it like in short bursts then. I, I'm, I'm oh. very interested in, in hearing what you think about that game because it definitely does seem like it's a love it or hate it type of experience. Yeah, you know? I'm a I'm a Kojima fan, so I'm I'm expecting to like it, but we'll see. who knows? I didn't like the Phantom Pain, but that's I don't really blame Kojima for that. So but anyway, anything else is that is that is that pretty much what you've been uh, been playing? That's pretty much it. Little games here and there. I played a I played a strategy game on PC called Bad North, which is also on Game Pass. Um, it's kind of like it's kind of like a tower defense game with Vikings. And you just sort of create units and guide them around, and they automatically kill things. Oh, and I was um playing a totally accurate battle simulator as well. Right. Have you right. seen that? I did. In Game I, Pass. Yeah, I, I did see that. Isn't any good? That game is so addictive. It's like, <laughs> there's really not much to it. It's just sort of like a physics, crazy physics game where you set a bunch of units in opposition and then watch them battle, you know, 
You can like you can summon like a hundred skeletons and watch them try and fight a mammoth, for example. And the mammoth will just sweep its tusks and they'll all explode into bones. And you can press the mouse down to go into slow motion. It's like it's just fun for a little while. Like if you if you're just bored, but it's it's not like mind blowing or anything. It's just a fun little game. Like Game Pass has been re- like Game Pass has this like random game button now. I don't know if you've seen this. Game Pass does, and so does your actual uh, my games and apps. There's a button at the top right now that will, ah, okay. will pick a game for you uh, if you don't. Well, know I, what I've to been play. Um, I've been using that on PC, just hitting hitting pick a game for me and then playing it. And more often than not, I've actually enjoyed what they've recommended. So um, that's how I've just been messing around recently because I haven't really had time to sit down. And, really get my teeth into a game except for you know like games like monster hunter you don't really have to even pay attention to them because the the combat's all in your muscle memory and like i can i can fight a monster while also talking to my boss or even podcasting you know but i don't want to be podcasting when i'm playing death stranding i want to concentrate on it and stuff like that you know what i mean yeah i know exactly what you mean so (sighs) you know what i mean so yeah so what have i been playing the last two weeks jez what do you think what, what what have I been Pokemon. up to? I played Pokemon. Play. I played Pokemon twice in the past two weeks. I think I'm on boss six, gym gym battle <laughs> six. I, You've got to complete that because I will, we raised. I'll complete it. Don't raised, worry about it. You better because we raised the final tally for our charity drive was seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's nice. Which is the most I've ever raised for but, charity. Let oh. me just let me just say I hate the game, Jess. I hate it. I hate it so much. And I, I, we all know you hate the game, but you still have to play it because I'll finish it. Um, I, I just don't understand why you won't give me high level Pokemon. You know, it's cheating. It's not cheating. Anyways, so I played that for a little bit, <laughs> and honestly, I haven't played anything else. Um, I I don't I know. Pumped. Like I just like I mentioned in the last podcast, Pokemon has killed my love of video games. Right. <laughs> um. Oh dear. So all I've been really doing, and I hate—I I don't hate this—but you know when people used to make fun of Xbox gamers and be like, "Oh, they don't even play; they just get on Netflix and watch TV and stuff." Mm. Uh, that's been me the last couple of weeks because honestly, there's nothing like there's no big game out, right? And there isn't really a big game coming out until Ori 2 in March, realistically. I mean, some people consider Dark Siders Genesis a big game. Eh, I don't really think it is. World War or Zombie War Four, I think, comes out in February. Eh, zombie, not, zombie Army, Zombie, zombie Army Four. Not really that big of a game. There's nothing in January, as far as I can tell. It's like the first big don't, game. You know, don't sleep on. Are you a fan of Diablo? I like Diablo. Yeah. Well, don't sleep on Dark Side of Genesis then, because no, I'm no, I'm, I'm saying I'll play Dark Side of Genesis, but I don't <laughs> think it's like a big game. Like Ori is, or Last of Us Part Two is, or Avengers is, or Final Fantasy VII Remake, or Star Wars, or Doom Eternal. So here's the thing. So because I've been watching a lot of shows, I I finished all four seasons of Expanse on Amazon. Which if you're into sci-fi, if you like Battlestar Galactica, you need to check that show out. But then I watched uh, the Witcher, the the new uh, the Witcher uh, series on Netflix. No spoilers. I've only seen the you first to, episode. It, it's great, but here's the thing. I now want to play Witcher because I only put 50 hours into <laughs> Witcher 3. I didn't finish it, so now I bought the complete edition. I'm My next game I'm going to play is The Witcher 3. I'm going to run through that. Like oh, I man. Watching that, watching Henry Cavill is, you know, uh, do his so thing, good. and I just I was just sitting there. I was like, I want to play Witcher again, man. I want to play. Well, I want um, to play Witcher again. The week the show dropped, uh, The Witcher Three rose back to the top of Steam sales. It did. Uh, yeah, it did. So you know, I uh, hopefully there's some other publishers seeing how a good show can translate into game sales. Hopefully, you know, maybe that's we'll get to see some more video game, some more quality video game TV well, shows. This is, not is that it, The this, Witchers. Yeah, yeah. yeah not not that book. The Witchers. Yeah, book yeah, thing. Yeah. But I, it, I know it's, it's based on it's the book, really right? good. You, you know what I mean. You know. What yeah. I mean. So that that's gonna be the next thing I play because uh, <laughs> the show was so good. It got me into the mood to go back and actually finish Witcher three. I watched like Lost in Space season two as well, and then uh, I think I got a couple episodes left to catch up on Mandalorian and the new season of Views out. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to watch, and I just I just 
there hasn't really been a game, a new game re- released recently on the Xbox that's like, I need to play this. Uh, See, and they're like, I've been in, um, <clears throat> I've, uh, you know, I've been in the same boat, really. I think that's why I've been just been playing random stuff and not really getting my teeth into anything. I'm kind of like waiting for the next big game release. Yeah, I hear you. I don't know what 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 is the next big game release really? Well, I don't know. I don't know in January. I mean, I guess like I said, we we mentioned uh, Zombie Army Four and Dark Siders Genesis finally come to console because that's out on Stadia and PC. And I then, actually wrote a best upcoming Xbox games article recently. I did. And, um, I did see that. And then March uh, has Final Fantasy VII Eternity. remake and Neo Two and Ori Two. And yeah. Doom Eternal, and then April is Resident Evil Three and Cyberpunk, and then May is like Avengers and Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> Minecraft Dungeons, baby. Minecraft Dungeons that. sometime in April. Bleeding Edge in March. Um, yeah, I mean, so like once kind of March it's here, it's like whew, it's gonna be great. And uh, as Adam says in the super chat, play Yakuza. That is all. Those games are supposed to come to Game oh, Pass yeah, pretty Yakuza. pretty soon. So there's Yakuza Zero. Yakuza Kwame 1 and 2. So, yeah. I mean, there'll be stuff to play, but <clears throat> I figure I have enough time to get through Witcher and all the DLCs before something big. I just need to get through Pokemon. And, <laughs> I, but, like, um, I feel the same way after watching The Witcher. Like, I want to I wanna start over. So, I think I might start over with you. But first, I'm going to try and rush through Death Stranding, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, even rushing through Death Stranding, you're still probably looking at the 30-hour game. So, I mean, I, I think I, I spent 45 hours in it, but it's not a short game by any stretch of the imagination. So, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, so that's the games played. We're going to be moving on to the topic. So, if you guys want to join the show, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Um, you know what? We missed last week, and we did a podcast before, or the day of the Game Awards. So we haven't even talked about that, but I figured, you know, let's let's talk briefly about the Game Awards. What did you think of this year's uh, Jeff Keighley's show, The Doritos Pope? Are, are you a fan of the Game Awards? Do you like how it's structured? It's definitely increasing in viewership every single year. He had 45 million viewers this year. Uh, I appreciate what he's trying to do for the industry. He's trying to give the industry a credible awards show on the level of the Oscars, because that's... The industry's always had a lot of different sort of award shows, but they've they've often been tied to publications and like there's all sorts of like is this like you know, is this legitimate? When it's tied to a publication there's there's always that sort of thought think thought process behind it. But this is sort of like a meta award where lots of publications get to vote on the awards and it kind of feels the awards feel a little bit more real, I guess. But um I appreciate what they're trying to do, but I don't watch the Oscars and I ain't going to watch the Game Awards either. I watched mm. up to the Xbox Series X reveal and then I turned it off because I kind of, oh. I knew, I knew, I knew that was a thing. So in my, in, in my, before we talk about that, because I think the Series X announcement completely overshadowed the entire Game Awards, but maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm biased. Maybe... Maybe if you're a PlayStation or Nintendo fan, Nintendo fan, uh, it didn't. But I think in in terms of like news, they it completely overshadowed it. But Microsoft also showed off a couple other games trailers: Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which got delayed again, Jez, to March. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, that game was supposed to come out. Remember, originally supposed to come out in August. At least that is what we had heard, and then it was delayed to February of 2020, and then it got delayed again. So, I mean, take as long as you need over there at Moon Studios. We'll be playing it day one. I will be. It's, I, I'm, gonna, I'm working on a few videos for the end of the year, like my Game of the Year video and my Most Anticipated for 2020 video. I got a video that I'm almost finished with, uh, talking about why I'm so excited for the future of Xbox. It's going to make a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people upset, in my opinion. I, I, I think when I post that video, did I show you the, the thumbnail uh, I made for it? Uh, yes, I believe you did. Uh, yeah. So people, uh, people are going to be, because when I, when I look at Xbox and I look at where they are now with a year to go from launch to where they were in 2012, a year to launch, 
it's like two completely different companies. One that was trying to do almost as much as they could to get away from making a pure gaming machine and just... Anyways, that's just a tease of some videos that I got in, in, in the works. But, uh, Ori looks great. Gears Tactics, I think it was the one that kind of sparked your interest, right? 40-hour campaign, single player only, no, you know, uh, I think Rod Ferguson said no, uh, DL, uh, no, no, like, microtransactions. You know, um, <clears throat> I should, I should be happy about that, no microtransactions thing. What that says to me is, they're not expecting it to do well, and they've got no post, post-launch post plan, you know, in place, because... They're gonna drop it. They're gonna they're gonna fire and forget on it. That actually weirdly makes me nervous. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, you know, it it just seems odd for Microsoft to be like, yeah, we like bragging that they've got no post-launch plan for the game. Well, so, I mean, there's also the issue that Gears Five has kind of been criticized for its post-launch monetization. I will say, speaking of Gears Five's monetization, Microsoft sent me a survey to do. Um, recently about Gears 5 and it was like um, what do you think of the game like what what areas would you criticize about the game and there was like a huge list of things that were you could tick to criticize the game but there wasn't a single option to criticize the microtransactions mm-hmm. and it's, it's like <laughs> are they so totally tone deaf so I had to fill it out, fill it out in the other box you know it's like come on I mean, I get that they're all cosmetic, but it's the fact that they're tied up to the progression system and, you know, it's it's unclear what you can buy and what you have to earn. And then there's that whole totem character thing, which everyone seems to hate. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. It's a bit of a mess. I, I am. It's just, I'm just past it. You know, I know. I, I, I can definitely tell. But shout out to Albert for the super chat. He says, this VGA is pretty good, although I'm a pretty... I'm a little peeved that once again there's no reveal for new Arkham game. Me too, man. I, I need my new Batman, and I was kind of upset it wasn't there. And L Animan Appeal says, whose job is it to dis- dictate how next gen takes form? Is it the industry leader or the strong competitor that's making momentum? Who sets the bar? I think I think the industry leader is probably just trying to do everything they can to continue that trend and not make waves whereas like the competitor who's made mistakes you know like wii u with nintendo the playstation 3 you know with with playstation like they're trying they, they'll do things differently they're trying to change the narrative and that's exactly what xbox has been trying to do so um i think that's kind of what's going on there but back to gears tactics though jez Confirmed launching in April, PC only. Uh, to start with. To start with, Rod did say it's coming to Xbox. So when do you think it comes to Xbox? Do you think it comes as a launch title for Series X? Do you think it comes later, like 2021? Uh, what- I think it'll. Co- I think it'll. I think it could potentially come out this year. Uh, well, 2020, the same year as um, the PC version. I don't see why not. It's not like it's going to be such a huge, complicated effort to pull it across because it's just going to be based on UWP, presumably. Well, it's also... I, I, I get, like, the control scheme if we're talking about Age of Empires, right? A real-time strategy game obviously plays much easier and quicker with the keyboard and mouse. But Gears Tactics is an XCOM clone, right? Yeah. So, and those have been on console for a while. It's... I don't understand how... It would take that long to get a control scheme working when you have many examples to kind of choose from there. So I, I one of the things I did notice from that trailer though was it the, the cutscenes did look very high quality. It looked like the game got a, a, a like a serious <clears throat> budget increase. Yeah, it does seem like they're taking the story aspect of it quite seriously. Um, it doesn't have a from you know talking to people at the coalition it doesn't have a management layer like XCOM does like in XCOM you don't just like um you know send your units out and fight you sort of also manage your base and you have to build it up and you have to do research and stuff like that there's nothing like that in Gears Tactics from what i understand it's more like 
Mutant Year Zero almost, where it's sort of like a story based XCOMI type game rather than a management based XCOMI type game. It's such a weird <laughs> way to describe it. But, you know, it, it does seem like it's a little bit more straightforward than regular XCOM, but I've got high hopes for it. I, it's a bit, I suppose it is like a niche sort of genre, but. At the same time, it's it's a very underserved genre, which has its fans, you know. So I'm hoping it does pretty well, you know. I'm hoping it lives up to the Gears name, at least. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It's a prequel, anyway. So the Locusts are going to be back, and, you know, we get all that nostalgia coming along with it. And maybe it'll fill in some gaps in the lore for people who are into the story and flesh out some of the characters' backstories. Like, it seems like Cole's in it and stuff like that. So, I don't know. We'll see. So, those are the two games that Microsoft showed off. The game that won Game of the Year was Death Stranding. Well, I was going to say Death Stranding, but it didn't win Game of the Year. Uh, Sekiro. Is that, was that a genuine mistake? What? Did you genuinely, like, mistake Death Stranding then? Uh, yeah, I, I honestly did. I was like, and Game of the Year is Death Stranding. But no, it was Sekiro, which surprised a lot of people because... Uh, everybody thought there's no way that that game would stand a chance, even though it's like the highest rated game out of all the nominees. I think. Well, I think. Well, Super Super Smash might be a little bit higher rated. That made me incredibly happy. Not because that Stranding lost. I know some people are happy Sekiro won because that means that Stranding didn't win. Uh, I I really like that Stranding, but because I Sekiro's my game of the year. You know, a little spoiler for my video coming out. Uh, you know, in a couple days or tomorrow, or whenever whenever I finish it. Um, I think Sekiro's game of the year, and I would put Resident Evil Two as right right beneath it. Um, so I'm I'm totally happy with Sekiro winning. Like I I was I was pumped when that was announced. Sekiro is like one of my biggest backlog shames. Like I I owned the game, I played a little bit, but then I just didn't because of work, and then you know it snowballed. I really want to go back and play it, but then I also want to play Death Stranding, and I also want to start The Witcher again. Like, where, how can I get time, Rand? See, this is the thing about how I play games. If there's something I really want to play, I play it immediately, so I don't ha fall into the trap that you're into right now, where you're like, I want to play this game, and I want to play this game, and I want to play this game, and I want to play this game. Uh, basically, if you <laughs> skip something, then it's not really that important. Uh, that's kind. Of, that's kind of like how I always looked at it. Like, sure, I have games in my backlog I would like to get to, like Mafia Three or Mass Effect Andromeda, or uh, it's, it's like I, I bitch, right? But I got four hundred hours in Monster Hunter World, so it's not like I don't have time. But it's like whenever my friends are online, it's like I, I'd rather just play with them in Monster Hunter or something. No, I I'm feel you, man. I remember I put 900 hours into PUBG over the last, you know, year and oh, two years almost. But that's uh, crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, if it's a game I want to play, I immediately play it day one because I don't want to be in a situation where, like, I, I'm looking at, like, oh, I need to play this and this and this and this. Like, sure, there are games in my backlog that I want to play, but I skipped them for a reason. Um, I played the one I wanted to play more first, especially when games came out at the same time. But, obviously, Xbox Series X was the big reveal at the show, which, if you listen to the podcast, the day of, uh, I correctly predicted that. <laughs> Nobody believed me. <clears throat> Even Jez didn't Suits believe me when I, when, I told you, when I told you the day before. I said, Jez, they're going to reveal the new system tomorrow. Jez is like, no, they won't. No, they won't. I told Colt that Colt eventually came around to my. I had to work on Colt for a while because I was I was going through my crazy theory of why everything lines up, and I was talking to Colt about it. And at first he was like, "No," and then the more I explained it to him, he's like, "I think you might be onto something." I told. Well, him I knew I knew they were announcing something big and hardware related. I just sort of I didn't want to jinx it by thinking because I did I did post on our Slack channel. Keep your eye out, because they might reveal Scarlet tomorrow. But I, I wanted to believe, man. But cynicism holds holds me back, man. Yeah. Shout out to Spider Man for the super chases. Was it smart for Phil to be so secretive with the Xbox Series X? 
I don't. I mean, I think it wasn't. I think it was a smart play to actually announce it at the VGAs. I think that is. That is such an aggressive mood, aggressive move from Microsoft, like doing something different uh, because common, the common sense approach would be you do it like you always have. You have a media event sometime in May, you, you gather everyone there, you, you, you give your take on the new console and the plat- new platform features, you go to E3, you know, that's like the safe way of doing it. That's also the old way of doing it. And if you listen to Major Nelson's podcast a couple days ago, he posted, Phil talked about how they came to that decision. How uh, basically someone new to the team like brought that up. He's like, how about we do it this way? And at first, Phil didn't like it. But I guess you know, over time, he, he grew to like that idea. And now you have it. Like Microsoft is out in front of Sony. They revealed the system, the name. You, you have all the concern over the name out being talked about today. Like, because right? Because what what was what was the talking point after they announced it, Jazz? Confusing. confusing. It's it's so confusing the name. Which, to be fair, I fell down a rabbit hole on YouTube. Right. Sometimes I, I know a lot of people probably experience this with different things. Like you start watching one video, then you watch another video. Like the other day, I fell down a rabbit hole uh, watching David Blaine's magic tricks. I think I spent like an hour just watching David Blaine stuff, right? <laughs> That's so random. It is random, but I'm just saying it happens. And I'm sure people in chat can have their own, you know, tell us like a rabbit hole they fell down. I fell down a rabbit hole watching people react to the Series X reveal because it was because it didn't leak. And it was so surprising because nobody expected it except listeners to the Xbox Two podcast because we're informed. <laughs> so you guys knew. That it was really interesting to see people's visceral, visceral, and like first reaction to something as it was happening. No, because nobody was like, "Oh, well, this must be Xbox because it leaked." They kept it hidden. Phil read a secret script on stage. They looped the video, so it only showed the first twenty seconds, so it didn't leak from the show. Um. So it's really interesting watching people react, and a lot of people were like, "What is this? What? What? What is?" It? And, and the, people's first reactions, most of them, when they go into the water for the video, is that it's Bioshock, right? Because <laughs> water, Bioshock, and then when they show that car, the amount of people that were disgusted when they saw that car was was quite a lot, Jez, because. Racing games, they don't really get the blood pumping. You know what I mean? You see a car and you're like, whew, man, I don't, who cares about this? Right? And then they show FIFA and people get really interested. Like, wait a minute. You get a car and you get FIFA? What's going on? And then Master Chief shows up and people start thinking to themselves, wait a minute. So this is an Xbox ad. What the heck is this? And then it shows the console, and, and people just were like, oh my god, it's the new new Xbox. But then it said Xbox Series X. And so many people were confused with the name, Jazz. I shit you not. I was watching uh, the e- Easy Allies reaction to it. One of the guys thought it was just the brand new Xbox that was coming out this year. Like an upgraded Xbox uh, One X. You know? <laughs> like, so many other people were just so confused with the name. And I understand that. And, and watching the videos, like, I definitely get that um, concern. Like, what is this? Well, But a year from now, it's not going to matter. Well, after seeing the way that, like, you know, can the Xbox One all digital play discs article spiking on Windows Central, I think I might have overestimated the average consumer, maybe. But the way I look at it is, like, it looks... It looks so different to what we've got now. It'd be hard at a glance to confuse the two systems, I think. It's pretty obvious that it's not an Xbox One, just from looking at it. And I would say that if they if they have similar like um shout out to Clobril, by the way, because he's been doing some like concept art for like packaging and stuff like that. And he like imagined that it could have like a sort of monolithic packaging mm-hmm. where it's like it's packaged more like an amazon echo 
than like a traditional console. Like they could even package it differently to make it stand out in a retail shop. And people who are buying it at retail, they're the they're the people who are most likely to be confused by it. I think. So, I don't know. I, it's it's ultimately our marketing at the end of the day. I guess. Yeah, and well, that's the thing. Like by this time next year, obviously leading up to launch, Microsoft will be promoting it heavily. GameStop and Best Buy, they'll have trained their employees. They'll have signs up for it. I don't think anybody is going to mistake the new Xbox. But roughly, yeah, I agree with you. Like it's on Microsoft to market that correctly, and get people to understand that this is the new console. I mean, obviously they screwed I think the- like, like a lot of people were saying that it was confusing. And I was saying like, but people don't get confused with a new iPhone every year. It's true. But like thinking, thinking back to that now, when I think about it a little bit more, it's because Apple has kind of trained people to expect a new iPhone every year. You, you aren't trained to expect a new console every year. And people have this sort of ingrained idea about what a console cycle should be like. Like, for example, I was watching, um, you know, the South Park episode where they're uh, fighting over whether to get a PS4 or an Xbox One because they can't play together. And the, and they were saying, like, we all have to play in the same system. There's sort of like, in the wider market, there are expectations about what a new console generation looks like. We can't play together. It should be like... The new console should be like this. It should be like that. There's, you know, will there be backwards compatibility and stuff like that? And a lot of people just, they either just don't know, they're misinformed, or they just don't do the research, or they just can't be bothered and stuff like that. So, like, fighting those common narratives is going to be part of Microsoft's marketing effort. Because one of the big common marketing efforts, um, one of the big common narratives in the wider market is that PlayStation is better right now. That's just the, the assumed thing, especially in, like, markets like Europe. So, Microsoft has a lot of stuff and explaining to do, I guess, if they want to market that properly. Because, you know, it is potentially confusing to some people. And I think I was maybe a little bit overly dismissive about that before. Yeah, I mean, considering, like you said earlier, uh, people are searching uh, for articles about, uh, hey, can my new Xbox play discs? (laughs) Where's the disk drive? No, so it's like in one hand you yeah you look at like the new iPhones and how how many there are and like how many Samsung Galaxies are and there's so many and all you really need to do is just look and kind of research for yourself which ones you want. So it's like eh you think well maybe that won't be bad that bad for video games but then you know you got like I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. Um cuz I maybe do, people just take their phones more seriously than they take their consoles. Yeah, well, yeah, but I also I also think they're gonna phase out the Xbox uh, One X. I I do think yeah. there won't be there won't be Xbox One Xs on store shelves at this time next year because because that system doesn't make any sense anymore. Like if yeah. you're if I you're feel like they're they're gonna rapidly phase out the last gen consoles because and as well because the new consoles play all those old games too, so it's it's all the same ecosystem still. There's no reason to buy those old systems. It's like what they do with Surface. Like, when they release new Surfaces every couple of years, they've still got stock of the old Surfaces, and you can find them on Amazon and stuff. But Microsoft won't sell them, or if you, they won't be, like, prominent in the store. Like, it's hard to find them to buy them. So, it's kind of like that. It's, It's moving to a new era of, you know, ecosystem upgrades where the ecosystem doesn't change it's not like the old days where a new console meant all your games were gone it's different now it definitely is very different uh backwards compatibility makes it so instead of you buy an xbox one and you have and you only could get a possibility of what how many games did xbox one launch with 25 maybe like 20 like 22 something like that now is essentially well. You have all your backwards compatibility games. Every game from Xbox One, the 360 games, plus whatever new titles launch. So it's definitely a different scenario. But how shocked were you, Jez, at the form factor they chose for Series X? Because I gotta say, my first thought was like, that's just a PC. <laughs> that's just a PC tower, small mini PC tower. Well, I I thought of the first thing I thought was Amazon Echo. And I was like, oh my god, they're going to put far-field microphones in that thing and you'll be able to do it. But 
No, it's it's it is more like a mini PC, isn't it? Yeah. And I think like um, the people on Windows Central who like you know they cover tech, they started com- started comparing it to the old Mac Pro. You know the thing people said looked like a a, a trash can. Remember that cylindrical old Mac Pro from mm-hmm. a few years ago? I remember. Which had like it had like a centrifugal cooling down the middle of it, and then all the components were sort of you know around the edge. It was it was a weird design, but it made sense from an airflow perspective. Um, that's what a lot of the tech world was comparing it to. Meanwhile, everyone else was comparing it to like I don't know the the monolith from S- the Space Odyssey. You know, stuff like that. There's some great memes about that system when they when they unveiled it. Um, but I I actually like really like the design. You know, I, the the fact that it looks like a mini PC tower is fine to me. And uh, I already have like the way my setup is. I got my PS4 Pro and my Xbox One X set up next to each other vertically, in um in sort of like a mini a mini shelving tower. So like it fits perfectly into my setup and stuff. And um, we put together some. Uh, I don't know if you saw around. I did see. I did see. We you... put together some three D models. But you weren't the only. It's all, all of a sudden everybody was like putting together mock Series X with cardboard. Like every website. Yeah, know? but you could interact with ours. Ours were three D mm-hmm. interactive. Ours was the best. I'm just throwing that out there. Ours was the best. But um, we actually, I think we had the measurements wrong the first time we did it. And some people were like, oh, that's too big. And I was like, eh, is it too big? And we sort of went back and looked at it again. And our 3D printing guy printed it so he could actually fit something into the USB slot when he 3D printed it. So now it shaved about t- about 12 millimeters off the overall size, the height. So I think we have it pretty, pretty rock solid now. It's not that much taller than the current gen systems. But it's double the volume, though. So it is a big boy. And that just means beefy internals to me. Yeah, cooling system <clears throat> because it's you know, as they as the as your source, uh, you wrote in your article, people telling you, twelve teraflop, uh, Navi GPU, uh, Digital Foundry said they are the same thing, and they're saying it's it's that way because it probably even though the boards won't necessarily be any different from Series X, is with that kind of power it requires. You know, uh, it's definitely going to generate a lot of heat. So you need, uh, you know, a, a form factor that can, you know, get rid of that heat pretty easily. And it seems like, like Phil said in, in some interviews, they they built it because they they were going after performance. And it was like, I we're we're targeting these specs. Uh, build me something that could uh, work. And it was like basically, all right, well, this is what we came up with. So well, it's not just performance. They also want it to be silent. True, because they're Science developing it with um, console streaming in mind. So, like the way that console streaming works on um, on uh, the Xbox One X today is that I can stream my console games, and the Xbox will stay turned off, and it won't turn on my TV and stuff like that. It'll it'll be as though it's turned off, but it'll just be acting as a server. If you are like, if you have your Xbox One X in the living room and you want to stream a game from the living room to wherever you are over the internet, the last thing you want to do is make everyone at home suffer from huge jet engine sounds while they're trying to watch TV, right? That yeah. kind of defeats the purpose. So they've also designed it to be quiet. And um, I think Phil said in an interview that it, it's roughly about as loud as the Xbox One X right now, which it's is it's pretty silent, you know? Yeah. Shout out to Yosemite Blam for the super chat. He says, remember the fake David Blaine magic trick video? I don't know if I saw that one when I was binge watching it, but uh, thank you. And Robert says, there's been four consoles, Xbox 360, one, one X should have went with Xbox five and fives. In my honest opinion. Um, Phil did say like the, the Xbox, that's just the platform name and you know, it plays all the generations. And that's exactly what they were kind of aiming for. And obviously series X implies there be multiple configurations of the new system uh like we've yeah. been re- you know saying here on the podcast since october and jez you know talked about in windows central like lockhart's back i don't know if you saw jez but frankie from 343 <laughs> basically confirmed it on reset era yesterday i wonder if he no, got no, no, no. he he didn't he he um he said he was playing devil's advocate ah, he was, on... yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Who's based playing... on the assumption the article was real, but which he... I thought was a very, it was a masterful way to handle it because if he, if he'd have deleted his post, it would have been like, oh, he confirmed it by accident. But he, the way he sort of wrote it back is gives sure. him plausible deniability. It's it's the best way. Best. I was just doing devil's advocate. It's like no 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 no. We all know Lockhart's real. Like <laughs> come on, like so yeah. that's definitely very interesting. Um. But it wasn't so. Phil just didn't bring Series X, right? Which is a big enough reveal. But obviously, more important than the power uh, is the games, yes. and they revealed games are pretty important. Well, what's pretty important? Games, pretty games important. Games are pretty important. Yes, they are. And they revealed. <laughs> it's interesting because I wonder how many people from Xbox actually listen to this podcast. I know there's quite a few that do, because I presented this exact scenario one of the times we were talking. I said, you know what Microsoft should do, because Ninja Theory is a great studio. Uh, you know, they made Hellblade, they made Heavenly Sword, which were kind of exclusive to PlayStation for a bit. Uh, what better way to kind of showcase to all the PlayStation fans who are watching that, hey, Ninja Theory's got this, you know, game that you might really like. And don't worry about Bleeding Edge. Like, for all you people out there who look at Bleeding Edge and are like, I don't want that. Don't worry, we got a game for you, right? And they revealed Hellblade 2 alongside the reveal of the console. So that kind of quickly dispelled all the notions that studios that Microsoft bought, they're only making cartoony games. Yep. Um, here's your obviously incredibly looking, mature, realistic, AAA, blah, 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 whatever, you know, people say, uh, you know, because remember, remember how down people were when Ninja Theory's first game was revealed to be Bleeding Edge? How upset people were? They were triggered. People were, were pretty triggered triggered and i was and we, we came out there like listen listen we've known about this for a while calm down people the game was in the works before microsoft even bought it don't worry there's the hellblade teams working on something and they have another team working on something else but nobody would listen just like just like recently and i'll point back to the major nelson interview with phil spencer you know here's out here's obsidian here's and they just released outer worlds right to great acclaim nominated for game of the year at the game awards and then at XO19, they announced Grounded, and people were like, no, they're turning, ugh, they're turning Obsidian into shit. They got the Ninja Theory <laughs> treatment. Who wants Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, right? Um, I, I do. Well, you know, whatever. People are like, <laughs> more cartoony, this is the Game Pass fodder, and all this stuff, right? And then, like, you come out there and be like, no, 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 no. This was being worked on before Microsoft got them. The... The big team, their main team's working on something different, which has been described as their version of Skyrim. People are like, no, it's Game Pass fodder. That's why they get, right? And then, like, Phil, <laughs> Major Nelson's like, yeah, I went to Obsidian. And Phil's like, and did you uh, did you see their new game? And Major Nelson's like, yeah, I saw it grounded. And Phil's like, no, the, the, the game that the whole team's working on. And Major Nelson's, you know, and this is like, oh, so yeah. Like, I don't know, like, people, like, they jump to conclusions about everything. Uh, <laughs> they, they think, like, oh, they're only going to make this style of game. Like, yeah, really? Are you being that dumb? Uh, uh, getting onto a tangent here. But what did you think of the Hellblade 2 reveal, Jazz? You did, like, a whole breakdown on the trailer and what was being Dude. said and stuff. Like, give me your thoughts on it. I've never been... It's been a while since I've been that excited about a trailer. I think the last time I was this excited about a trailer was Witcher 2, which was a long-ass time ago. You remember the Witcher 2 trailer where... Mm -hmm. the, I can't remember his name. Le now. Letho, so I believe, was the one yeah. like on the ship yeah. when it was... Uh, you know, you tacked it with ice. Yeah. Slow, slow motion, cutting heads off, and... God, that trailer was just incredible. And um, and I think of other great trailers, like the, the Fallout 3 reveal trailer. No, like, that was you know, draw worthy, um, as a fan, as a, you know, franchise fan and stuff like that. But, um, I was not a massive fan of the original Hellblade. Like I enjoyed it for what it was, but you know, it was pretty limited ex in scope. And I, I wasn't a fan of the, the pseudo puzzle aspects, you know, and, and, um, <clears throat> I just, it just left me wanting more, like a lot more. And I just sort of, took it as a walking simulator sort of thing i'm not a huge fan of that sort of sort of um experience but um a hellblade 2 trailer was like 
absolutely incredible. And you have to assume that the the, the game's going to have a broader scope than Hellblade One. I would I would at least hope that it does. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the band Highlung, mm-hmm. the music, my God, man! I um when <laughs> it's funny because like the the top comment on YouTube was like, "This is the band Highlung." like everyone everyone's and then you go to the you go to the band's page and it's like like this comment if you're here because of hellblade 2 and <laughs> like that overnight sort of like that band must have got like a huge bump in interest because um i, I guess that that that's, that seems to be pretty popular already with um you know fans of the genre but um huge new audience for them i guess like being played at the game awards and they are working on the soundtrack for the game as well Oh, well, that's gonna be good. I, yeah, I felt like there was a lot of hidden information in that trailer, or like a lot of a lot of hints about what the game could be about, or some you know aspects of the gameplay. Maybe even like they showed us like a village, a village twice, and like you had the protection runes on it, and and the the soldiers seem to be working with Senua and. They also had the same rune pattern on their shields and stuff like that. Like there was a lot, of, there was a lot of like little hints in that trailer about what the game might be about or how it might play. You know, all speculation, of course. But sometimes it's fun to speculate. But I was, I was pretty hyped on that trailer. Yeah, can you tell? Yeah, I, I listened mean, to that dude, song about a thousand times. I was, since... I, I was hyped. I love Hellblade One. Sure, um, like you said, the puzzle stuff, n- not really super unique. But I think it fit the narrative of her having, uh, you know, mental, uh, like her mental state, I think worked well with the puzzle, the type of puzzles they were doing, right? Yeah. So I think it kind of fit narratively. And I was one of those people that was like, you know what? Do we really need a Hellblade 2 before they showed the trailer? I was like, that story was kind of self-contained, even though at the end there's kind of a hook for a sequel. Um, and... Then I see that trailer and like, all right, I was wrong. Uh, give me Hellblade two, you know, like <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that immediately. And Albert in the super chat says it's interesting they showed Hellblade, which is early in development, instead of Halo Infinite, which is coming in twenty twenty. Could that mean something? Uh, I don't Ooh. think that means anything. I mean, they've showed Halo Infinite what twice now: once at E three twenty eighteen and once at E three twenty nineteen. I would imagine we'd see it again either at the media event, if they hold one, which we're going to talk about here soon if we think they're going to do one, or uh, definitely at E3. Um, mm. Because I think Microsoft played this so perfectly. It's like, you get in front of PlayStation, right? You you drop this console, the form factor, the name, you get people talking about it. There's been a sense, there's been this excitement around Xbox recently, since the VGAs, that I haven't really kind of experienced with the community in a long time. Sure, people were excited for for Xbox One X because we were getting rid of that old-ass VCR system that played games like shit, okay? And we are finally getting a, con- a console that was going to play games better, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not just Series X that is getting people excited. It's like you see Hellblade 2 and you realize, oh yeah, this is why Microsoft bought Ninja Theory. And then... You hear about Obsidian and what they're doing. You see that Rare is already making a new game. And you look at all the studios that Microsoft bought and be like, wait a minute. They're actually going to be making games? Holy shit. And they're not all going to be kiddie stuff like people have told me? Well, 100% on board on this. And there's Game Pass, so I'm going to be able to buy this system day one on Game Pass and have a bunch of games probably available for me for the low price of whatever the hell they're selling Game Pass at. And this system is designed to do one thing? And one thing well, and that's play video games with no gimmick hook like Connect or Snap or any of that stuff. It's like, this is just a beast <coughs> that is going to be super I've powerful. Heard, um, I've heard that it might not even have HDMI pass through. I mean, I don't think I don't think it should. I mean, what's, 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 the, what's the purpose for that? I mean, I know some people do like it. They do have it as like their centerpiece of their entertainment center. But at, 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 like Microsoft's whole vision of surrounding... The Xbox One was completely negated. I mean, there's no need for an HDMI in. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is, like, everyone's cutting the cord, man. Everyone's like, who watches TV anymore? Everyone watches, like, Netflix or 
Disney Plus or Amazon Prime or like it's basically like just sports really and the licenses they're in. And you know, it, it does suck if you're into sports and stuff like that and there isn't an app for the, you know, for watching the games. Like I, I don't know much about sports, <laughs> frankly. But I think like if they do cut the HDMI pass through, it'll be as as a more of as a result of low usage more than anything. And I did run a poll on, on my Twitter about whether people used it and not many people seem to use it, even amongst like the hardcore crowd, so yeah. I don't know. So I accidentally hid this comment because I hit the wrong button, but Eric the Beard says, Thoughts on the majority of Xbox fans giving shit to Sony fans for their love of one and dones, but now celebrating them coming to the next Xbox. Well, I mean yeah. I can't speak for other Xbox fans that by myself and I think I even made a video about this last year making fun of uh, that idea of one and dones because it's just a group of people What's a one and done a one and done is basically god of war you play it one oh. time and then you never play it again or you play spider-man oh, okay. one time and you never play it again a lot of people started saying that about playstation games because they're single player adventures that maybe you play once possibly twice and they use it in a derogatory term like oh it's just yeah. one and done like that's really supposed to mean something most games are one and done for for most people uh, so I, mean, I, I play Gears 5 as a one and done because I like the campaign, but I'm not a huge fan yeah, of multiplayer. And to me, to me, horde me, mode seems worse this time yeah, around. To me, Gears 5 was a one and done. You know, like, I, I, I it, it, it's just because at the time Xbox didn't have something along those lines, those people, those people who need to attack other the other console because they don't have it uh, are kind of pathetic, in my opinion. I'll just yeah. say that out front. Like if you're if you're an Xbox fan and you're attacking PlayStation because you don't have it, I think that's pretty fucking sad. Um I agree. So maybe you should grow up a little bit. Uh there's many different types of experiences on Xbox and PlayStation. You have your multiplayer games that could last you forever, but then again, if you don't like the multiplayer game, it, it's a one and done. You know, there's great single player experiences. There's long term and get like there's many different type of indie games like every, there not every game is meant to be played for hundreds of hours, um, so no that was just you know that's just it's basically the same way PlayStation fans say on, on the opposite like Xbox has no games it's the same exact thing but in reverse, for the most part, um, mm -hmm. but yeah Jez so like now with the reveal of the console with the reveal of Hellblade. Do you still think they're going to hold a, an event before E3 to reveal the whole series line? Right? You know how they did Xbox One reveal in May. Sony did theirs in February. Do you expect them to do a proper reveal again before E3? I think so because um, what's going to happen is they're going to they're going to talk about it at GDC. So it's all going to leak anyway. Um. Sorry, one moment. So it's all gonna leak anyway. So I think I would I would have thought that it would be smart of them to like do maybe a deep dive into the system or at least work with a you know an outlet like Digital Foundry, maybe, to cover you know, to cover the system and what it is and stuff like that. Um I don't know. I would I would think they would do that. Either themselves or with Digital Foundry. Or you know, Windows Central. And I was like, I want to do do some features with us. Maybe that'd be sweet. Did did it? But, up, um, let me ask you this question. Be honest. Did it upset you that IGN and Gamespot got the exclusive Series X coverage and Windows Central didn't? Did they? They had articles up immediately as soon as it was revealed. Yeah. How did they? I didn't know that. They 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 knew they were they were they were on the inside, Jazz. They were on the inside. Wow. Oh yeah, I knew Gamespot did. I didn't know IGN did though. Yeah, IGN IGN had had stuff up right away. Yeah. Well, that's mean. Very mean. That is mean, but I guess I did leak some things around the same time. But whatever, whatever. Uh, L and Appeal says, "Could we see StarCraft Two come to console next gen?" Um, I don't know about that. Uh, we'll, obviously, we'll definitely see Diablo, but I'm not sure StarCraft will make it over. But getting back to the topic, a reveal event, I think they're still going to do one. I think they kind of have to. I think they need to lay out their vision of Xbox, 
the strategy of the platform start, you know, like that's cause it's not so much just a reveal of the console. The, the reveal events also how you see gaming going for the next generation, you know, Microsoft. Mm. Yeah, sure. At the Xbox one reveal, they showed off the console, but then if you remember a lot of it was talking about the user interface and connect and how you could watch TV and swipe left and swipe right and all that stuff, right? PlayStation 4 reveal event, a few games. But then they talked a lot about like PlayStation Network and the improvements and the share button and watching people stream and, you know, their strategy around that. So I feel like, especially with E3 wanting to be all about games, that Xbox is going to want to take the time and be like, Here's what we think with Xbox Series X and the Lockhart. Uh, what you know, both of these really mean. Uh, what we think is the future of Xbox Live, uh, X Cloud, uh, Xbox as a platform itself. Uh, how does this look like on you know this system? So I think they need to do that. So I do think there will be a uh, reveal event sometime next year before E3. Yeah, I agree. I think, like, um, I will say, though, like, ironically, with all the the focus on games and stuff like that, there are so many aspects of Xbox that are lagging behind now. Like, okay. they haven't updated Upload Studio for mm. years. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the dashboard is still... They've updated the hell out of it, but it's still slow and painful to use. Like, just browsing the store is, like, wading through molasses. It's so damn slow. And you know all this, all this operating system stuff, which I feel like, you know, people laughed at them and stuff for focusing on a lot of those extraneous features. But you kind of need that stuff too, you know. And then like that's even without talking about localization, which um, I've got an article coming out next week about how bad Microsoft is at localizing. Um, for different markets that they're not in, that they're not that interested in, like they're basically, as far as Microsoft's concerned, the only markets that exist are the US and a little bit of the UK, and the rest of the world basically doesn't exist. <laughs> that's, that's that's how that's how Microsoft approaches its products, and it's that that isn't just an Xbox problem. That's a Windows problem. That's an Office problem. That's just the way Microsoft seems to do business. But if you compare that to PlayStation. You compare that to Apple or Google, it's completely different. They see like they have a much more global approach to their products. And it's that like lack of global focus, which is also gonna hurt Xbox. Like they can have all the games in the world, but if they ain't localized, if the operating system ain't localized, if they don't have market marketing in all those different territories and stuff like that, it's you know, they're just giving customers away. And mm. Microsoft seems really good at sucking at that so i don't know there's a lot of things that they need to get right on top of the game stuff and um it's about whether those people are actually there and doing it i don't know i don't know rand you don't know but then it comes down to uh launch stuff so i want to backtrack a minute and talk about the ps5 because i'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna kind of predict or compare what we think the launches will be for both. There was a new rumor that came out last night about the PlayStation 5 and its power level. And for a long time, uh, you know, like six or last eight months, a lot of people, PlayStation fans, uh, been told by, you know, people at Resetter and maybe some journalists that, hey, we heard that PlayStation 5 is going to be more powerful than, than Series X. Well, at the time, the next-gen Xbox. And then it comes out yesterday from a guy who is an AMD driver diver who's just like grabbing information. Um, not necessarily an insider. Some people say he's an insider, but he's just a driver diver. I'm posting the information he finds, you know, from AMD's internal testing uh, that the PS5 chip from like back in June was coming out at about like, you know, nine teraflops and 16 gigs of RAM, blah, 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 all this stuff, right? So. As expected, uh, recent era melted down in the next-gen thread because they were all led to believe that PlayStation 5 was going to be more powerful. And now the reality of the situation, possibly, because who knows if it's true, is that there's a chance it may not be. 
So now you see people talking about, and Jez, and I'm not lying when I say this, there's people talking about dual GPUs, that the <laughs> PS5, the PS5 at nine teraflops is their Lockhart, and there'll be another PS5 uh, like Pro <laughs> that's GPU. that's 18 teraflops. There's some people talking about 72 teraflops. Uh, it's it's gotten pretty ridiculous with people hitting the denial stage and the bargaining stage and all that stuff, right? Uh, um, why do people care so much, man? It's so exhausting. Because here's the thing: power matters until until you don't have it, right? Power matters until it doesn't. And I do see a lot of people talking about it on online, on Twitter, being like, yeah, power's great, but games are what's really important. And it's always been about the games. And I agree. It's The games are the most important. It doesn't matter if your system has the most power, but you got nothing to play on it, right? Or look nothing... at the Switch. Look at the Switch. Right, look at the Switch. But here's the thing. I just, like, I think back to the start of this generation, and I'm like... I look at what the PlayStation 4 launched at, and I look at what the Xbox launched at, and I think to myself, was it really about the games? Was it really about the games with, with, with a Killzone and Knack launch and a Rise and a Dead Rising 3 launch? Are we, re- are we really revising history to say it's all, a bit all about the games when at the beginning of this generation, the talking point was, was resolution, was 1080p versus 720p for years it was. It had nothing to do with games until PlayStation started getting great games roughly around the time Bloodborne came out in 2015. But even more so since that is a niche title, more around when Uncharted 4 came out in 2016. Uh, hello? Like, people like me who've been paying attention uh, know that, no, it wasn't about the games at the beginning of this generation. It was about power. And the reason it was about power was because Sony had the power. I don't know if you recall, but you had Yoshi, Yohei, Yohei Yoshida, Sho, Yoshida, I, I don't, whatever, Shuhei Yoshida's literally said, 1080p makes you a better gamer. And why did he say that? Because Xbox One could barely output 1080p. You don't see Sony talking about power once they lost, lost to the Xbox One X and that came out. But nobody wants to talk about that anymore because that's in the past. Sure, if power is equal, then what matters? The games, right? That's the most important thing. Like, clearly... But don't tell me at the beginning of this generation it was all about the games because it fucking wasn't. Not for not for years. It definitely was not. So I don't want to hear that bullshit. God, it gets me fuck I, I see this people, they just <laughs> they just have this rose like they think about like how this generation started out and be like it was always about No it fucking wasn't. Knack and Killzone, are you fucking kidding me? Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Oh wow, runs mad. No, because it's such a bullshit thing. Yeah, it's easy. Oh, it's all about the games. No, it no, it wasn't. It definitely fucking wasn't. Well, to be fair, it's not like Xbox had bangers either. No, well, that's what my whole Xbox? point. Like Rise, Knack, uh, Killzone, Dead Rising Three. Uh, nobody had like you. Okay, maybe you could say Xbox had a slightly better launch lineup, but like the games were pretty shit for a couple Xbox years. But ex- ex- exclusives wise, Xbox basically is just like Killer Instinct for for me for ages. Yeah, God, I'm pr- this, this podcast is definitely getting de- dis- demonetized now. That's for sure. Rip. <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, the, the, am I the only one that remembers this shit the, about how how? But, okay, so now, so no, now I, I remember. I remember counting the pixels between seven twenty and. 1080. I remember. I remember. Or even, I, or even 900p and 1080p. Like, I remember people being mad about 900p, you know. But then, like, when it when it started being, like, you know, 4K and, you know, 1440p, no one wanted to talk about resolution anymore. Exactly. As soon as the X came out, nobody wanted to talk about resolution anymore. I remember when people were ragging on Quantum Break because it was 720p and, oh, it looks so blurry. You know, now now it's like, it's not about the resolution, it's about the games. But it surely was about fucking uh, resolution then. All because Sony had it, and there was a disparity. So whatever. Now, so now it might be a little bit. Now the Series X might be more powerful. Maybe they're similar, and you know the games will bear fruit, right? Either way. Now speaking of the the like the here's the thing. If Sony, I think Sony's aiming for three ninety nine, right? Mm-hmm. I I think they want that price point because that price point. 
served them so well this generation they sell 100 they sold 103 million copies or what or units whatever they have this generation it's clearly worked for them but if you're selling a system for four hundred dollars obviously you have to make compromises i do think the series x is going to be 500 and i think it's as powerful as it is because microsoft's going to sell at that price point but then they have the cushion of lockhart i think playstation 5 doesn't have the cushion of another system but they want 400 dollars and for $400, that is the performance of the system that they can provide for you and, and then basically not also eat their lunch on the price. So you're going to have... And But as I look at it, I'm like, so what if it's 9 teraflops? So what if it's not as good as the Series X? Right? A, a 9 teraflop system for $400 is incredible. Because you look at what Sony Studios can do and it's like, man, they, they pulled off God of War and it looks the way it looked on a 1.8 teraflop machine. Uh, what is Sony Santa Monica going to do on this thing? So, like, to me, it's like, I don't I don't see the bad news. Like, who cares? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just want... So, uh, I just want the systems to both be great and the developers to use utilize it properly. I don't really think there's going to be that whole debate like it was at the beginning of this gen. And I don't really think there'll be a discussion of, like, oh, the resolution stuff. Because I think they'll both hit exactly what they're what they're going for. So there won't be that talk. Maybe it'll be about frame rate more. I don't know. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see until the next gen hits and when Digital Foundry, you know, does all their calculations or whatever. Who knows? But um, there was this kind of uh, another rumor that I wanted to talk about was, um, I don't know if you saw this, Jez, about the PS5 and Xbox launch titles. Mm-mm. Uh. But Tell I, me. I need to hit the super chats first. We got Pixel Bit saying ran. They were counting grass and crushed blacks. Yeah, I remember Grand Theft Auto Five. The extra grass, right? Uh, that made <laughs> made a difference. Christian Gonzalez says you can't be the most powerful, and most affordable. That's true. Obviously, with pr- with the high price comes you know there's things you can do. But for most people, the mass market look at four hundred dollars and they'll go there. And like like Jez mentioned earlier about the ecosystem, you're a PlayStation guy and you have owned a hundred games. What are you getting? You're not really going to be switching to Xbox. It's just like an Xbox guy who has 100 games isn't really going to be switching to PlayStation. Um, and LMN Appeal says, if consumers like Sony, why not buy at fi- at $500? Um, I think Sony probably chose the system and the specs because it could reach a certain price point when they want to be able to sell their... Because, Jez, do you agree with me in the sense that <clears throat> because Microsoft is going to be putting, at least for the first couple of years, their software on the older systems, that their initial console sales don't matter as much to them as they matter to PlayStation? It's hard to say. I mean, obviously, they want to sell the units. And I think part of this 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 whole generation for Microsoft is about rebooting their relationship with gamers. You, know, you could say that the Xbox... One X did that to some degree, but it still had that whole Xbox One connotation, and I don't know. This is the first system that's basically 100% Spencer, right? Right. Yes. It's Spencer's games. It's Spencer's vision. It's it's you know, there's no Connect port. There's no probably no HDMI in. There's probably no IR blaster even. It's just a pure video game machine designed to do one thing, and that's play video games really well. Presuming that the HDMI isn't there and the IR blaster isn't there. By the way, that, that isn't a confirmed. It's just sort of, this is what I've heard sort of thing. Right. Um, so, you know, I do think they want to they wanna have a good launch. It's, it's never a case of, like, it's, it's not going to be important to them. I'm expecting, like, a massive marketing blitz. I'm expecting them to really push it, maybe harder than they've ever pushed the console before. You know, I'm really expecting them to... You know, if they have the launch lineup, they're gonna really want to capitalize on that sort of, you know, momentum they've had building up, and they've got so much momentum now with Halo and PC and the Halo brands being reignited somewhat. You know, like every article we post about Halo Bloody Reach on PC just explodes right now, and because like the PC market's just so damn massive, and I know it's like that's a different market to Xbox, but it's that sort of relationship with the internet is, is just improved you know what i mean yeah i think they're gonna want they're gonna want to have a big launch i don't think it's a case of like 
either company is going to be like, oh, well, you know, this is a, a, a slowly, slowly race. You know, it's a long-term plan and w- whatever. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be all out from the from the start. I think they're going to push really hard and I at least hope that's what they're going to do. I don't think, they, I don't think they're going to rest on the laurels at all because don't forget that the Xbox platform, it's not just about the consoles anymore. It's about ultimately having more endpoints for developers and convincing developers to build for Xbox so they can move to the future of game streaming too. So like you've got Amazon making its cloud streaming play next year. You've got Tencent working on a cloud streaming play with Nvidia. And you've got all these companies that was, who are gearing up and exploring getting into that space. And it's ultimately a race to the next market, you know, a race to that, you know, theoretical market. It, it, you know, we always talk about streaming and it might, it might not happen. People might just prefer the ergonomics of console gaming on, on their TV and stuff like that. Like, like they do with VR. Like VR sounds really great on paper, but the mass market doesn't like the ergonomics. And it could be that way with game streaming to your phone and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, I know for a fact that like when I stream games to my phone, my eyes get tired after a while because all the text is so damn small. And you can't see what you're doing. But <clears throat> I digress. I digress, Rand. So the I rumor, they, so the rumor was uh, that this Russian journalist who... He, I guess he correctly predicted Hellblade 2 and that's running to PC, so, you know, whatever. But he's saying that PlayStation 5 will have no major exclusives at launch and that Xbox will have 13 to 16. Not, like, necessarily big exclusives, what? but... Ex- yeah, and I was thinking, I'm like, eh, like... I don't know about that. Really? I don't... I, I, like, I, really? It, here's the thing. <laughs> You already know Sony's going out there and buying third-party exclusives. We saw one at the VGAs called Godfall from Gearbox Publishing. Randy Pitchford, Jazz, I know, I know. I, <laughs> he he questioned Phil about the. He's a funny, that tweet. He's a funny guy. Yeah, he's a funny. And uh, you know, think about it. Yeah, he does have a PlayStation Five exclusive. Now his company's not making it, but his company's publishing it. And guess who's paying uh, Gearbox Publishing for that for that title? Oh yeah, Sony is. Hmm. Uh, does that mm. have anything to do with it? Maybe mm. not. Maybe so. But if, <laughs> but if if Randy Pitchford's upset about the technical prowess of Series X, is he also going to say the same thing about the PlayStation Five if it comes out that it's even less tech, tech you know, less capable than the Series X? Mm. Will, will, will he ha- will he keep that same energy? Or is he going to hmm. shut his mouth like he probably is going to do because Sony's cutting him a check for Godfall? Hmm. I wonder, Rand. I, I wonder. wonder. I wonder what's going to happen there. I wonder. Very, very wonder. So I think Sony is gearing up because I, I don't think Sony... Like, when they, when he mentions major exclusive, to me, major exclusive means something from your first party, like huge, like Horizon Zero Dawn, for example, or like a Halo Infinite. And when hmm. I look at what could... Potentially be available for PlayStation next year. The only like, I don't think they'll have a big first-party game available at launch, and I think they know this, which is why they've gone out and they're going to get a bunch of exclusive third-party games, kind of middle tier, uh, to kind of float it until they can hit their bigger first party launches. Like for instance, Horizon Zero Dawn 2. I think Horizon Zero Dawn I think there's a possibility it hits launch, but I think more than likely it comes out early 2021. Like maybe still in that launch window of February to March, but I think that hits then. And I think Spider Man two hits sometime at the end of twenty twenty one in September. Uh-huh. Um I don't think Gran Turismo seven will be ready. Uh so I think what you're gonna see is I, I think you're gonna start seeing this at their reveal event, as well as their E3, a lot of partnerships with a lot of third parties. I think Godfall is just like the first one to kind of like to the domino effect. I think you'll see, and I don't know, like maybe Street Fighter Six. I know it, I, I watched Maximilian's video. He he thinks there's a Street Fighter Six coming, and the question is, is it going to be PlayStation exclusive like Street Fighter Five is? I would not be surprised to see if Sony pays through the nose to keep the, the next one exclusive to PlayStation. So I wouldn't be surprised if Street Fighter 6 is exclusive 
to the PlayStation 5 at launch, which will piss off a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I, I do think, you know, and then... Yeah, they, that, that, is, um, that is doubly annoying considering Microsoft's not going to have... Killer Instinct. Last yeah. time they had Killer, In- they had Killer Instinct to answer that. This time they're not going to have it, you know. Um, you know, we, you know, we always hear, heard those rumors that Killer In- there was going might be a new Killer Instinct on the way, but I don't think it's in development at the moment anymore. If it was ever in development, I don't. I could I, be wrong. I mean, hopefully it's in development. Hopefully Microsoft is knocking down developers' doors to get it start working on. Um, yeah. but I, I think the Demon Souls remake will be a launch title for PlayStation. I think they'll have a bunch of third-party remake games. Demon Souls. Yeah, I've heard there. I've heard that. Oh. That's that. That Blue Point is definitely one of their projects. Is a Demon Souls remake. Oh snap! I didn't know that. So. I think you'll see a bunch of third-party exclusives. They'll be PS5 only, so they won't be PS5 and PS4 because Sony obviously wants you to buy the console, so they'll make sure mm. that those games are only available on the PlayStation 5. Sure, Godfall is also available on PC, but if you're a console gamer, the only place to play it is PS5. And I, So I don't think they'll be a major first-party exclusive from Sony at launch. I mean, I could be wrong. It's possible, you know, the rumors that Guerrilla has like a multiplayer title in the works that's maybe SOCOM, maybe that's available at launch, maybe The Last of Us Part 2, like the multiplayer that they removed from the game, maybe that could be around launch. Uh, maybe Sony's going to rely on, you know, up because the, the rumor, as the guy said, that Sony's going to rely on a lot of uh, PS4 games, uh, kind of not remastered, but updated for PS5 to kind of bridge the gap. Um, mm. So... That I think that's what's going to happen. You'll see them have a lot of third-party exclusives. I don't believe for a second that Xbox has 14 to 16 exclusives for launch. I just, I just don't. I just can't see that happening. Yeah, it seems like wishful thinking, doesn't it? I mean, you look at it from Microsoft's perspective. Everything's going to be on the previous Xboxes. They have Game Pass, right? Which you don't necessarily want to blow out because you want people to continue to subscribe to game pass. Yeah. So, and you, you're launching with halo infinite and let's be honest, halo infinite is going to overshadow everything. Mm. So, I mean, anything exclusive from mm. Xbox, really? Mm. Okay. Tell, tell me why you disagree. Tell, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me why. <laughs> Only if it's good. Well, okay, sure. I'm, I'm I'm baking on the fact that Halo Infinite is actually going to be good, but I guess it could be mediocre. Um, but yep. do you expect a new Forza? Because I do. I expect yes. there to be a new Forza game. Yes, I do. I, I uh... so, but I, we might disagree on this. I think it's Forza Horizon Five. By turn ten? No, by by Playground Games. Oh. Why do you think that? Because I don't think there's any way Forza Motorsports 8 is ready. Mm. Because when you look at the cycle and the history of Playground, they've always turned around a Forza Horizon in two years. Next year would be two years. That is true. And I just... I, I, I do think there is a Forza game coming. I just... The question is, is it Motorsport or is it Horizon? So I'm going to go with Horizon because you have Xbox's biggest franchise in Halo, but then you have Xbox's also probably second biggest franchise because at this point, can we say Forza Horizon is bigger than Gears? Bigger than what? Bigger than Gears. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so basically Xbox Series X is going to launch uh, with their two biggest franchises. Uh, Forza Horizon Five and Halo Infinite, which is why I'm t- which is why I don't think there's going to be also a lot of other exclusives for Xbox because those two games will overshadow them all. Uh, maybe there'll be some smaller Xbox global publishing titles, but mm. I don't think there's going to be that many. I could be wrong. It's interesting to think about. I um, it's. The thing about the like the game stuff, it's super hard to predict because like 
like when it comes to console and platform stuff things just leak because they have to work with partners they have to you know update drivers they have to work with you know manufacturers and things leak because you know people are leaky and companies are leaky but when it comes to games it's a it's it's like much much harder to get a sort of a read on what they could be aiming for mm. so so yeah, people I'm always I'm, I'm always weary to make predictions about the games we have people disagreeing about forza horizon 5 kids smooth a buddy he thinks it's forza horizon or he thinks it's forza motorsport 8 as, as well as other people um that turn time has been, been working on it for a long time well yeah i mean they turn 10 had previously done two-year turnarounds until well right now i mean there was this was supposed to be the year noom forza came out and it, it didn't so mm. yeah it's possible motorsports ready next year and then horizon would be 2021 i don't know i think uh i think they're gonna flip-flop i think horizon i think they're gonna give motorsport more time to come out you know, sometime in 2021 and i think horizon is the launch title Definitely possible, but that's just me. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe Motorsport Eight's the title that comes out, so you can maybe have a title that's like, "Oh, we can do 120 frames," you know, because it's a track-based game. Um, yeah. So I guess that's possible. Um, the other little bit of news uh, that kind of came out was uh, Matt Booty said that we're going to see the Initiatives game this year, Jez, or next year. Thank God, mm. I'm driving me up the wall trying to figure out what that is. What do you, if, in my video, I said, if you look at the people they have hired and the studios they hired them from, I think it's a third person action adventure type game of some kind. I think that's, it has to be, right? Yeah. Has to be. I, I, I'm excited to see what it is. More so than any other studio that Microsoft has or any other project that um, any other studio is working on. More so than whatever the Coalition's working on next, or Ninja Theory, or Compulsion Games, or even Playgrounds RPG. I want to know what the initiative's working on. I'm sort of like, again, I'm, you know, I'm just sort of like automatically cautious about anything Microsoft does nowadays. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just want to wait and see it. But like, I don't know. Do you think, okay, here's the question. Do we know if it's going to be a new IP or something in Microsoft's existing portfolio? Uh, That's the question, isn't it? What would you like to see? I would like to see a new IP. I would very, would very much like? like to see a new IP from them. The next the next big Xbox franchise. I don't want it to be Perfect Dark. Because, honest, I'm going to say this again. It's going to anger some people. I will die a happy man if I never have to see any of Rare's IPs come back. Whoa. No, wow. no, no Banjo. No, no banjo. Conker. <gasps> no Perfect Dark. Banjo. No nothing. I don't. I don't want to see any of those old ass IPs come back. <laughs> right? People got to be coming for you, man. I know. I know they will. The ban- the ban- those those banjo fans. They are passionate people. Well, they can play. Uh, they can play Smash Brothers all they want and get their banjo fix. <laughs> wow. So. I I no like I I don't I don't look and maybe maybe if they maybe if it is Perfect Dark and it's reimagined, then uh sure. You know, they got to sell to me, but I just, I just, I just don't care. <laughs> and Kid Smooth says I'm pissing him off today. <laughs> he he tweeted me and he said, oh, you know, uh, this is a, uh, you know, when Rand said uh, Gears, Gears 5 is a one and done. And it was like, you know, some gif. And now, now, now I'm triggering Smooth and he, he's, he's a little upset at me. I'm sorry, Smooth. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, to be the bearer of bad news and say all this stuff. It's just, it's just, it's just what I think, you know, it's, it's. Don't take it so seriously. <laughs> Little old Rand. Yeah. Uh, Hassan in Super Chat says, a Space Ninja RPG open world game. That'd be cool. Uh, and Adam says, new IP in the Banjo universe. Um, 
Yeah, but I'm really interested in seeing what the, the initiatives make. I think it's definitely going to be a... Uh... I hope that it's a gritty, post-apocalyptic Pokemon clone. Pokemon clone? Get out of here. <laughs> nah, I'm nah I don't, I, it's going to be a third-person action game, isn't it? I just hope that it's not just Tomb Raider with a different skin, though. I want, it, I want something unique. I want some risks taken. I want it to be mature-rated. You know, give me an answer to Death Stranding or something. I'm not saying it has to be, like, unique for the sake of being unique, but can we have some, like, new ideas, maybe? Something like that. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm getting at? I hear you. I hear you. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying like, like Perfect Dark is bad. I'm just saying they would real. It would really have to be something special for then for me to see what they're making and then the title screen being Perfect Dark, where I'd be like, oh damn, because like I look at it now and it's like I'm happy with never seeing Perfect Dark ever again or Banjo any of that stuff. So it would really have to be high quality. Uh, to get me on board, so yeah, I just I just want something new from them, something that hasn't been done, that you're not like, you know, beholden to anything where you can create the world and the lore and everything to your liking. Whereas like you kind of would, Perfect Dark has to have Joanna Dark as the protagonist, and it has to be this certain way, and all that other stuff. You're kind of tied to it, like. But then again, again, if that's what they want to make then that's what they want to make. There is also that, that whole creative freedom thing, right? So if they feel Joanna Dark or Perfect Dark is the best, then who am I to argue differently, right? Indeed. Who am I to argue differently? Um, who are you, exactly? Who am I? So since this is the end of you know, t- you know 2020, people have been talking about their game of the decade. I figured... You no, know, I wanted to talk about what you would pick as your game of the decade, Jez. You know already what decade is. What is it? It's Monster Hunter World, man. It's Monster Hunter World. Really? Unashamedly, unabashedly, Monster Hunter World is my game of the decade. Mm. And I realize, you know, I realize it's not going to be everyone's pick, but for me personally, I haven't really fallen in love with any game this decade like i've fallen in love with this one and um you know there are tons of other games that i would put up up there like you know i, I wrote an article about it a mass effect 2 the witcher 3 obviously i absolutely adored both of those games but for me i think it's a it's a bit of a personal situation you know the fact that i can play there's a game that me and my siblings are so passionate about. And with me living in Germany, the, like, the fact that we can share this hobby over the internet means more to me than the story of Mass Effect and the story of The Witcher and stuff like that. So like, I realize it's probably not the best gamey game of the decade. But just for me personally, it's the game that's had the most impact on me, I think, this decade. Like, I can't even count World of Warcraft because... The last decade kind of marks World of Warcraft's gradual decline. <laughs> so, like, Cataclysm came out in 20, uh, 2010, and then it sort of got worse from there. So, can't even can't even count World of Warcraft. You know, we so have that's, over that's just, me. that's just me. We have over six hundred people watching. Make sure you guys all hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're new. If you're enjoying the show. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, Dead Captain James says, Star Wars, The Old Republic is my game of the decade. Hope you feel better, Rand. Thank you. Thank you very much. That came out this decade? It. Game of the decade's tough for me. Um, Knights of the Old Republic came out this decade? I think it did. 2009, 2008, was it 2000? We were talking about 2010. No, it came out in 2003. 20, what are we going oh, from? you mean The Old Republic? Mm, the MMO? Yeah, the Star Wars, The Old Republic, yeah. Oh, the old Republic! Wow, that's that's an interesting pick. And Tommy, I come in twenty eleven. Tommy Versetti says, "Rand, what are your thoughts on GTA Six PS Five exclusive for one month?" I'd say, man, Sony must have paid a sh- uh, ton of money to get a one month exclusive. Like, would GTA Six being exclusive for one month even mean anything or do anything? It would have to be at least exclusive for six months. Like one month is that really thirty days? Is that? 
Is that enough, Jazz? I I don't know. GTA is a big, big expansion. Uh, not expansion. It's a big deal. You know, it's a big, big deal. And I think if, especially in like the UK and the US, if Sony had exclusivity on that for any period of time, I think it it's a bigger deal than you probably give it credit for. No, I mean, yeah, Grand Theft Auto Six, biggest franchise in gaming, is just one month. You know, one month. Yeah, like that's just. I I don't know. <laughs> like, for me, I'd be like, I'll just wait and play it when it comes to Xbox. One month, but I know some obviously some. A people, lot of people won't. I know, and L M on Apino says, "Come on, Rand Ori, game game of the gen." So this is the thing I've been thinking about mine and. <sighs> It's really, really hard to narrow down one game. Now, if you look at like the most played game of this generation, for me, it's PUBG. But uh, technically, like a thousand hours or close to it into that game. But I can't honestly say PUBG is my game of the gen or my game of the decade, even though I played it the most, played it the longest. Um, it really didn't have that much of a lasting impact. It was just like, hey, my buddies are all playing this game. It's fun to play, and there's nothing else to really play, so let me play PUBG. And don't get me wrong. like I loved PUBG. It's just that like I wouldn't pick that. But then I think, okay, is it a 360 game? Is it a uh, is it an Xbox One game or PlayStation game? And while, while I'm like going through this, uh, make sure you, you, you guys, let's, let's see what your game of the generation is. Make sure you put it in chat. Cause I want to see, I'm sure there'd definitely be uh, a varying amount of, uh, different games. Somebody's game, game might be decade. Fortnite. Game of the decade. Yeah. Game of the decade. Somebody's game might be last of us. Someone's game is definitely going to be Witcher three, like Hazardors. Um, there'll be definitely many different opinions. And the thing is, I, I, I always go back to Bioshock, but Bioshock was 2007. So I can't pick mm. Bioshock. Too far away. Too yeah. far away. And I guess I could pick Bioshock Infinite, but I don't want to. Because even though I love Bioshock Infinite to death, I I, I can't rightly pick that. So then I think, okay, is it a three sixty game or is it an Xbox One game? Xbox One I haven't finished Witcher Three. So I honestly can't in good conscience say that. Like, I put 50 hours into it, but I can't. Then I think, okay, anything from Microsoft first party this gen? It's like, no, not really. Microsoft has kind of been mostly mediocre for this entire generation. So it can't be anything from Microsoft. Then I look at PlayStation. It's like, man, PlayStation, God of War. Clearly, God of War, the best game that PlayStation has put out this this entire generation. So I'm like, okay, so we have God of War up there, right? And I'm, I'm kind of just kind of going through the game. The game. So like God of War clearly, I think, is better than any of the PlayStation games that they've put out. Um, then it's like, well, but then I said Red Dead Redemption 2 was better than God of War last year. So it's like, okay, well, I got to have Red Dead Redemption 2 up there. Uh, you know, so it's like Red Dead Redemption 2 and God of War... So I've kind of cheered because I've because I wrote the article, so I've already I've already been through this thought process. Right, I know. So yeah. I'm going through my thought process right now. Um, and Kit's move in chat says there's three games that dominated the decade: Minecraft, Fortnite, and Rocket League. Sure, if you want to talk about um, influence, definitely Minecraft and Fortnite f- for sure. Rocket League as well. But like your personal, are you saying smooth that that's your personal game of the decade? I would love to know, you know, what your personal game of the decade is. Um, I wonder if it's like one of the NBA Live games. <laughs> Smooth loves NBA Live. Um, so I think back, and it's like, okay, Mass Effect Three. As much as I love the Mass Effect series, do I piss, pick Mass Effect Three because it does fall in that time frame, and it is kind of like a amalgamation of the entire franchise. Like I'd be like, oh, it's Mass Effect Three but then Mass Effect 1 and 2. But it's like, no, because I hated the ending of Mass Effect 3. Like, I despise the ending so much. Did you play the, the revamped ending? No, I never did. I never did, no. I was I was so... so... Like, that, was meant to be, that was meant to be good. But I didn't play it either. I was done, I was done with it at that point. Yeah, I so like... Know. You know, Rand, I, I actually liked Mass Effect 3 in its entirety. I I'll like... tell you why. Okay. I took the whole game. I took the whole game as the ending. 
because every every sort of every side quest closed off one of the plot threads like like ashley the whole the whole arc with ashley the whole arc with legion the whole arc with rex if he survived mass effect one and stuff like that rex never survives in my game by the way i always shoot him in mass effect one every time mm-hmm. insubordination man can't have that can't have insubordination in the ranks but you know i took the whole game but at the same time i kind of like i picked mass effect I always picked Mass Effect 2 because it was it was kind of put perfect. Like there was there was un, there was no dispute about whether or not that had issues and stuff. And Mass Effect 2 is probably my number two game of the decade. Number two, huh? After Monsanto. Hmm. Hmm. So it can't be Mass Effect because I hated what they did with the ending. Oh, you green, red, blue. Okay. <laughs> Nothing changes. What I hate really? that aspect of it. I hated, I hated that ending. And I remember watching Angry Joe's video about how it was, uh, it was. He thought it was really. Um, what 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 was the theory that that Shepard was actually indoctrinated? Indoctrinated, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, dude, that would be. I'd be like, oh, that would be such a killer ending if Shepard was actually indoctrinated by. And now I'm not even forgetting the uh, the the Reapers. Like, oh man, they would react re- retroactively make that series so great and amazing. But then Bioware came out and said, no, it's not true. And it's like, really? You just, uh, God, I remember reading that theory and being like, this has to be true. They should have, they should have left that ambiguous because sometimes you just don't need to know everything. Yeah. You don't need to know. Um, right. so it can't be Mass Effect. And I was like, okay, Grand, Grand Theft Auto 5 was also my game of the year for 2013. I love. Oh Grand man, I was gonna 5. put um, I was gonna put Dragon Age in mine, but that came out in like t- 2009 or something. Yeah. So it's just slightly out of the decade. Yeah, and you know, like Grand Theft Auto Five, you want to talk about influence, like you know, Minecraft, oh, yeah. Fortnite, Grand Theft Auto Five. Clearly, I had so... Minecraft in my in my list. My top, I did a top 15. I don't know if you read it. I did. But um, I think I had Minecraft in my list. I played the hell out of that game, and I, I always I go back to it every. Few I don't months. care for for Minecraft. So I was like, okay, so we got Red Dead Redemption 2. We got Grand Theft Auto 5. So obviously you can tell I like Rockstar. Uh, God of War, because I think it's the best PlayStation game. Uh, I wouldn't say Last of Us, because I think I I played that um, years later. And while the game is great, I think some of the impact is lost when when you've played games that have clearly kind of copied the formula for that game. Um. Last of Us 2, though, obviously, I think is going to be amazing. So, really... And then, I know, like, I love Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Or Ori and the Blind Forest. So, that would be my fourth entry. Um, I kind of got to go with... It's what I... Because Yabara asked me this on Twitter. I'm going to say Grand Theft Auto 5. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Slight, slight edge. Like, so, for me... Probably be like Grand Theft Auto Five, Red Dead Redemption Two, God of War, but like they're so ridiculously close together that Did you play the online portion of GTA five or is this purely going off the campaign? Per everything I pick is always purely based off the campaign. I mean I don't care about the multiplayer. Are you kidding me? I don't care about the multiplayer in Call of Duty. You think I care about the multiplayer in Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, that's a good point. I haven't I haven't even touch the, the the campaign in Call of Duty yet. As we're playing the multiplayer. We I mean, we I'll, play I'll, I'll we, play, you, we come you, at games from a completely different place, me and you. I tell you what what's not in my decision is Pokemon. It's probably the worst game of the decade for me. <laughs> Pro- probably like worst game of the decade for sure. Worse than those Barbie games you played for achievements? Yeah, honestly yes. Oh my god! Like I, I'll be honest, I let I play I played <laughs> Hannah Montana and I enjoyed playing through Hannah Montana more than I did Pokemon. <laughs> and I like even even the Barbie game where it was all about like you know taking your puppy and like checking them for fleas and stuff. That game is better than Pokemon. Come at me! What are you gonna? I'm, I'm being that actually sounds kind of interesting. You have to check the puppy for fleas and stuff. Yeah, you gotta walk them and stuff. I'm just saying there are oh, ga- wow. sure there are games I play for that I play for achievements that are trash. But then there's Pokemon, so. 
Dead Captain J says, Mass Effect Andromeda was my favorite over one, two, and three. Fight me. I'm not going to fight you. You know you know what? I I put... T- not 200 hours. I put like a good 100 hours into Mass Effect Andromeda. And um, I, I can't help but feel cheated out of a full Mass Effect game there. Because the, I'm not going to spoil it, but the way Mass Effect Andromeda ends, it leads you to think... There's something more here, and then they were like, "Yeah, we're going to do a DLC," and like the it, it ends in a way that makes you expect DLC, and then we we didn't get the DLC. It came out in the form of a book, so I I feel like Andromeda could have been saved if EA had grown a pair of testicles. Mm. I actually liked the combat in that game, but it was so it was so far removed from. Ah, the OG experience. There's a lot. There's a. There's been a lot of events. That, well, obviously, there's been a lot of events in the past decade. But we could do like we could talk for hours about all the ups and downs of this decade. Yeah. Like Fallout seventy six. My God, but Bethesda's fall from grace is like a massive talking point for this decade. Like for a time, they were like everyone loved them and everyone loved Todd and there were all these memes about how great he was and and now it's just like all about Todd's lies and the way that all their games are just sort of microtransaction stuff now. Oh my God. And I'll I'll never get over a game this year. This year has been awful for Bethesda. I'm going off on a tangent now, but well, I'm even thinking of like, you know, a top 10 list for game of the decade. It would be like Grand Theft Auto, God of War, Red Dead Dead Redemption 2. No, no, I'm not a big fan of Skyrim. So like Grand Theft Auto 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, this necessarily isn't in any order, but like Bioshock Infinite, Inside, Ori. Um, those are the ones that like come to my head like immediately, right away. I didn't think Inside was that amazing. I love Inside, but then again, I I do have maybe a different type of uh you know tasting games like Thanaros says, keep in mind that Rand believes Virginia was a good game that wasn't even a game. I love Virginia. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. Virginia is a fantastic experience. Sure, I wouldn't really even say it's a game either. It's definitely one of those kind of walking type simulators, which I do enjoy. Uh, I, I, I like those type of experiences. And it's a game that has no dialogue whatsoever. Uh, it has no dialogue? No dialogue. It's told all through you know environmental storytelling and especially music. And... Wow. I love it. Uh, I love that you're game. Weird. You're a weird guy, man. I am a weird guy. <laughs> I am. I am weird. Hollow Knight. There's a lot of great games. Um, so, you know, everybody's list is going to be different. Uh, it's all about like the next generation, like the next, you know, ten years. You, you think you think Microsoft will finally kind of like get that point where like halo is firing in all cylinders and people speak of halo. Like they speak of, you know, of the old three uh, bungee games, like halo one and halo two and halo three, you know, you don't really see a lot of people talk like, Oh, halo four or halo five is game of the uh, game of the gen. Right. Or even game of the decade. But I'm sure you go back to the previous decade and sure enough, somebody would definitely have a bungee game on there. Somebody definitely is going to have destiny or destiny two as their game of the decade. You know, really quickly, biggest disappointment of the decade. Oh, what what would be your biggest (sighs) disappointment of the decade? Hmm. Now that's, that's tough because like there's a lot of games that I was, kind of expecting to be bad anyway like i was expect i wasn't i was i just sort of had a feeling mass effect andromeda wasn't going to be great so like as a mass effect fanboy that should have been really disappointing to me but i just kind of expected it so like man that's tough while i, while I think about it do you do you have something off the top of your head or what what is chat saying about the biggest disappointments of the decade uh someone says crackdown th- 3 th- someone says mass effect andromeda another one for crackdown 3 another one for letdown 3 uh halo 5 single player anthem no man's sky fallout 76 voodoo vince halo 5 campaign anthem halo 5 single player um 
Yeah, so obviously, you know, people are picking Scalebound. Obviously, yeah, you know, the the cancellation of Scalebound might be someone's greatest disappointment. Mm-hmm. Um, Titanfall 2, somebody says. I'm going to say mine. Uh, my biggest disappointment maybe won't be a surprise to you guys if you guys have been listening forever. Uh, they were my favorite developer until, you know, obviously this game. Uh, Destiny and Destiny 2. The 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 fall of Bungie is Ooh. the greatest disappointment to me. That's controversial because those games are really popular. Sure. They're not good, but sure. <laughs> so there's a lot of angry people in chat right now. I know. I mean, Justin Bieber's popular. I don't think he's any good. <laughs> so now so now Destiny's Justin Bieber. No, I'm just saying just because you're popular doesn't necessarily mean you're good. And this is this is coming from somebody who adores Bungie, you know, who played hundreds and thousands of hours of Halo multiplayer and who was looking forward to what they were doing and was completely just turned off by what they made. I think Destiny and Destiny 2 are two of the biggest letdowns of this generation and how Bungie has gone about it. Like, I, I will never play another Bungie game. I'll definitely yeah. never play uh, when Destiny Three comes out. I, I don't. I will never. I will not touch it. Like they, they have fallen so far from me. I don't even. When I think of like the premier developers, when I think of Naughty Dog and Sony Santa Monica and Rockstar North and CD Projekt Red, you know, like the Coalition, uh, just like 4A, like the great developers out there turning out amazing. Uh, games like uh who who makes who makes like the dark souls games um from software from software yeah. right bungie used to be um, in that category they're no longer in that category like i think they're they're i don't think they're any good anymore fair enough respawn you could definitely add a respawn to that so jazz you, you have time to think what would be your biggest disappointment man i i just keep coming back to fallout 76 but it's kind of like it's less about the game that disappoints me and more about Bethesda's lack of caring about that IP. Like, I feel like Fallout 76 is the quintessential example of let's abuse our IP to make a quick book. And I think that's that's what really disappoints me about that game. Because it, it, even now, like, I don't know if you saw recently, but like, it's so broken still, and people are just like hacking it and stealing people's inventories. Like even paid items that people have paid for can be hacked and stolen, and it's just it's just crazy how broken that game is. Like they they just sort of cobbled it together out of like an engine that wasn't designed for multiplayer and this Frankenstein monster of a game, and then they had the audacity. To try and ch- charge people ten pound a month to play it, on top of pay to win systems, it's. I expected it to be kind of janky and bad, but it was so. It's been so much worse than what I expected, and from a philosophical point of view, just disappointing that this is. It sort of typifies Bethesda's attitude towards that IP, which, frankly, they don't deserve. They don't deserve the Fallout IP anymore. Mm. That IP is bigger than Bethesda, and they don't deserve that IP anymore. Um, but ga- game-wise, honestly, it's it's tough. Like, I, I rarely play a game and think like this is just so bad and so trash. Like, but like, and I was ne- I was honestly never a huge fan of Bungie, so like Destiny is not really on my radar as being disappointing. So I've never really been a big Halo fan. I don't know. No, That's I mean, t- Bethesda could, yeah, I definitely see that. So it's not necessarily much about the games. It's more about, like, the developers and maybe, like, the, the path they took. Because I was so excited for Destiny, and I played it, and I played it a lot, and I just hate that game. And then I played Destiny 2, and it's just like, this is, I, I don't know, it's just so disappointing coming from what they had made previously Halo that it's just like mm-hmm. they've completely 
going from my my favorite developer to someone who's like next game I'll probably won't even give a second thought is it's sad to me, you know? It's it's very yep. sad. I feel that way about Bethesda too. You know, like Rage was, you know, average, and you know, <laughs> Wolfenstein Youngblood was just garbage. Frankly, Rage was Fallout seventy six was. Yeah. I play. I played a lot of Fallout seventy six because I was desperate to like it, and some of the like story beats are, are good if you're willing to read loads and loads of text because there's no NPCs. And I just kept sitting there thinking, man, this, some of these story elements are pretty cool. Imagine if it had the NPCs to go with it, you know. But I don't know. I don't know. It has, I, I just can't, I, it's hard because all I can think about is Fallout 76 now. When you, but that's sort of like, it's because it's been recent, I guess. Like, there's been, there's obviously been other games that I've been disappointed in. Like, I was disappointed in Andromeda 2. I was disappointed in. I was very disappointed in Anthem actually, because um, I expected that to at least be passable, and it was worse than anyone could have expected. Right. And like the end game was non-existent, and like when I was playing it, I was like, "Wow, the flight mechanics are cool, the combat is cool, and like that." But then the end game is like, "Oh wait, there's nothing. There's no depth. There's no nothing to do." I think one of the biggest things about this generation that's been really disappointing to me has been the race to make service games mm. and sort of sort of chase that World of Warcraft inspired addiction of getting multi coded loot like your whole rares and then your epics and then your legendaries. And that whole sort of gameplay loop of just sort of chasing after loot. And the amount of developers that have chased that system and not really made anything good out of it and just sort of banked on the addiction loop that comes with it. Like Division 2, like... Division 2 should have been way better than it was given what they'd learned from the first game. But it was still pretty shallow. And Destiny as well, and... I mean, all, all the Ubisoft games. games have it. It was in, it was in the, new, it was in Far Cry New Dawn. It was in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It was in Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. They all had the tiered loot. Yeah, <sighs> and it's like it, it's awful too for playing it. Like, oh well, you know, people, people who play that sort of game, and I, I play it too. Like, I played loads of the Division Two because I was trying to find, I was trying to find the game in amongst all the loot and i meanwhile being addicted to the loot system so like at, Beth at ubisoft's end they're like oh they played this for 100 hours they must like it when really it was like oh i played this for 100 hours because i was trying to find the actual game <laughs> which is such a weird way to think about it but that sort of rush towards service driven games is one of the most disappointing things about this generation to me yeah, and that seems to be exactly what the casual to mid casual crowd seems to love, right? They see, and then the pu publishers see Fortnite making all this money, and they want a piece of that pie, so they all go after it. Um, yeah, that that definitely is like a, a disappointing direction. But you know, I, I wanted to you know kind of end the show here. Obviously, we're gonna take questions, so if you do have anything you want to ask, make sure you think of something and let us know. But I appreciate everybody being here i think we had a well over 600 people here which is great especially on a, you know one hour in advance notice on a friday which normally we do on thursday but just couldn't do it yesterday so yes. want to thank everybody for being here if you're listening to this later on itunes or spotify or anywhere we appreciate you as well so uh jazz what do you got going on i know you said you're working on a, a new article coming up soon uh, anything else <laughs> Yeah, I'm working on a I'm working on a look at the way Xbox hand you know, services outside of the US and UK. Basically not very well. And it's it's funny to me because Microsoft always says, Oh, we wanna we wanna we wanna achieve two billion gamers. We wanna we wanna meet two billion gamers. They can't even like get basic localization right. How the, how do they expect to meet two billion gamers when they can't even do like the most basic levels of localization is just sort of weird to me. It makes me wonder, like, are they actually serious about this, or is this just like 
you know, a game they're playing or something. I don't know. Don't ask questions, but, Jazz. Don't ask questions. Just consume. Um, just consume. Yes, until the apocalypse, which is very soon, apparently. But, um, but nah, that's it. Back at work next week. I guess got New Year's off, at least. That's good. That's something. Uh, so Nine Lives wants to know, do you think Phil will greenlight Crackdown 4? Not mm. with Sumo. <laughs> no, sorry, not with Sumo. Yeah, no. Um, I, don't I, so. I don't think so. Ah, uh, man. Yeah, I, I'd probably not. If I was if I was Phil, nope. Crackdown, Crackdown is dead and buried. Rip. And you only really have your, yourself to blame for it. I think, like, I think Crackdown could come back one day, but it'd have to be the right developer at the right time. And, but at the same time, probably not, because they screwed up Crackdown 3 so badly. I don't know. Yeah, they sure did. Uh, So, I don't think we'll see Crackdown uh, Next Generation. I think... Um, yeah, I think that one's going to be on break for a long time. And, uh, QV or QW Vampire wants to know, do you think Cyberpunk 2077 will be day and date in Game Pass? The Microsoft team was in Poland. So yeah, I guess we can talk about this. There was that rumor from a Polish filmmaker that Microsoft was in Poland talking to studios about, uh, joining Xbox, you know, game studios, potential buyout. Obviously the big studio in Poland that people are looking at is CD Projekt Red. There was the mm-hmm. rumor that Cyberpunk was going to be day and date in Game Pass. So, I guess we'll go with the first question. Do you think it'll be day and date in Game Pass? And what do you think Microsoft was doing in Poland, Jess? Well, see, like, on if I, if I was, like, Microsoft, if I was Phil, and I had infinite money, which he doesn't, by the way. But let's just assume that he does, for the sake of argument. CD Projekt Red is an obvious you know, shopping list company that you'd want to buy. Not necessarily just for the IP and the games, but also because of good old games like uh, GOG.com, which sells games. And that's one of the reasons why CD Projekt Red are able to make these huge, huge sprawling titles is because they are um, subsidized by their distribution platform, you know? So because of that, um, it sort of fits in with Microsoft's strategy to you know build up pc audience again it also philosophically fits in with microsoft's desire to keep you know make archives of all the software on windows and gog obviously archives a lot of games and stuff like that um but do i think they're going to buy cd project red no i don't think microsoft is willing to make that kind of investment like that'd be you're talking billions you know billions yeah. and billions so I don't think that's going to happen if they even wanted to sell, which they don't know. I mean, every every company wants to sell eventually because, you know, owners get old and they want to retire. Well, CD Projekt Red is also publicly traded. Yeah, that too. So. But it depends how much how much of it is owned by, you know, CD Projekt Red and how much is how much what percentage is actually floating around, you know. And Microsoft wouldn't do a hostile takeover because that's not really their. Yeah, they don't. They don't modern, tend to buy uh, studios. Hosts. They don't tend to buy companies on uh, publicly traded. You know, yeah, it costs a lot of money. So, um, so, but could it be in Game Pass? I, yeah, I mean, it costs a lot of money. Um, but ultimately, CD Projekt Red would. They've got a very good relationship with Microsoft. Microsoft has a lot of money to spend, and they've got a platform they want to build up. And also, it'd be pretty huge deal. And also, there's there's nothing they don't lose. They don't really lose sales because, as we've seen time and time again, Game Pass seems to help retail sales, not hinder them, because of the virality that happens as a result of being in Game Pass. Um, so I think it definitely could be a possibility. We'll just have to wait and see. I think it'll be in Game Pass at some point. I don't. I don't think it'll be there day and date. And I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft was in Poland talking to maybe like the Farm Fifty One, or the Astronauts, uh, independent studios, uh, to see if they wanted uh, you know 
continue talks about joining, but that's that's kind of what I think about it. Um, what what games do they make? Uh, uh, Farm Fifty One made Get Even. Um, Astronauts made The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Uh, their current their current oh. game is Hellfire, which has only been announced for PC. Um, so they're they're I I want to say Farm Fifty One's use Kickstarter. Um, but I, I think those would be like the potential targets if you're looking at like an independent studio that might have some financial difficulties. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, let's see. Rand, are you, you, Patrick Gonzalez wants to know, Randy, buying Series X and S for your collection? I'll definitely be getting Series X. Um, but I would. I don't think. I don't think I need Lockhart if I have Series X. Um, you gonna get both Jazz or just just Series X? Um. I'm just going to get Series X, I think. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'll probably give my Xbox One X to my cousin. And then just keep my Xbox One S downstairs for Netflix and stuff. I don't really need both. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, let's see. Apache wants to know, Rand, did you ever play Wii Happy Few? I think Compulsion is a great idea. Some of those side quests are wonderful. I recommend to try it. It's relatively easy. I did play Wii Happy Few, but more when it was in early access and i hated it so i doubt i'll go I, i'm waiting to see what they are making next uh see i, I, I keep hearing this about we happy few is that like now when you the what it's like now it has like some really cool elements but it's it's just kind of it's still disjointed because it, it was almost like a playable concept that they tried to turn into a game and it just didn't work yeah so um <clears throat> they have the most to prove, and I think that there, there is an interview recently where they basically acknowledge that fact, right? Yep, they did. They, they, there was, yeah. I think they're the one that has the most to prove out of all their studios. Like I, I remember, I remember uh, talking to Phil about it, and I said, I have no idea what you see in them. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like the other studios, I get no idea what you see in Compulsion Games. Um, but. Maybe, maybe maybe they'll be right. Maybe they saw something, or and all they really needed was you know money and and time to make something great. And uh, but yeah, I I I'm looking at compulsion. I'm like, mm, we'll see, we'll see. You you need to really prove to your, yourself to me before I'm on board with you. Uh, Element Appeal wants to know what do you think of the new DualShock Four bumper accessory? Um, I think I think they're setting up. The fact that uh, the PS5 controller will have uh, back paddles, which apparently it does. I saw some patent floating around today where it looks like the PS5 controller will have some some paddles on the back, standard jazz, which, oh, right. which kind of puts Xbox in an awkward position of maybe of adding a share button, which PlayStation had this gen, and then PlayStation adding back buttons an Xbox not following suit and then making people buy uh, well, you know, expensive it wouldn't be, to do it? It wouldn't be difficult for Microsoft to add a back paddle accessory because don't forget all Xbox One controllers have this proprietary port on the bottom. Sure. I, I could totally envision something that uses that because now that they all have 3.5 millimeter jack, that proprietary port is used for basically nothing except for like the chat pad, which is awful. And, um, and some like really old headsets. That's basically all it's used for. So it wouldn't be a stretch for Microsoft to follow suit on that. I don't think if if it was really necessary. But I barely use the back paddles on on my Elite. I, I'm I'm using it right now, Monsanto, and I only really use it for taking clips and stuff like that. Because you can buy because the new Elite, by the way, the new Elite has onboard memory, which is the old one didn't, which means that it can do like. It can do some more complicated things that the old one do, like um, it can have, uh, you know, you can bind the keys to system functions. Like I've got, um, I've got volume up and down on my TV on my, for example. Oh, that's cool. So um, you couldn't do that on the old one because of the way it was built. But you know. But, Who knows if you'll be able to do that on the next one because they might not have a focus, um, an IR blaster, which means. But then again, it could use HDMI CIC, I guess. 
I don't know. Never mind. I'm going off on the tangent. Yeah, so there's yeah. back buttons coming out for PlayStation, the DualShock, in January, and it actually has like an OLED screen on the back to switch profiles. I just find the idea of an OLED screen on the back of the controller funny because... Yeah, who's, that is weird. Who's going to see also, that? Right? It's going to just drain the battery for no reason. Yeah. Uh, so what else we got here? More questions? That's like, that's like Apple level of dumb design, like putting the charging port on the bottom of a mouse. Like, who would do that? So Apple, apparently. Rated D, Demonic, wants to know uh, what will sell more next year, Final Fantasy VII Remake or Last of Us 2? Um, I would say if you were going lifetime, probably Final Fantasy VII Remake because I think eventually it'll be on PC and Xbox. But just next year... I don't know. Like, I think Final Fantasy Seven. I want to say Final Fantasy Seven, but then Last of Us is pretty, pretty go- gosh darn uh, anticipated. Hmm. I'm gonna say Final Fantasy Seven. What do you think, Jez? What was the question again? Which will sell more next year, Final Fantasy Seven remake or Last of Us Two? Uh, I. Hmm. That's tough. Because. Seven Remake's not on PC either, right? Well, I, I think it said it, if it was Lifetime, since it'll probably come to Xbox and PC, I think Lifetime it would for sure be Final Fantasy VII. So if we're just talking next year... Right. But it's like, man, Final Fantasy VII is one of the biggest... Like, Remake is one of the most requested games ever. It's from a huge franchise. But, like, maybe the Final Fantasy games didn't sell that much. And then you have Last of Us 2. So I get, I guess it could be Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, I think Last of Us will probably outsell Final Fantasy, personally. Yeah. I think, like, yeah, f- with 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 core gamers, a lot of people remember Final Fantasy VII very fondly. But nowadays, like, younger generations, they don't know what Final Fantasy VII is. They certainly don't know what its significance is. So, it'd have to review really well. Yeah, and, probably, um, probably Last of Us, now that I'm thinking about how much uh, the Final Fantasy 7 games sell. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, I think we, we've been going long enough, so we'll end the uh, show for there for good. Thank you guys for the questions and uh, all the support. Me and Jez appreciate it. Make sure you follow Jez on Twitter. His link is in the description. And if you enjoyed the podcast, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Um, and hopefully we'll be back next week. Uh Particularly, yep. like, I kind of hope for Thursday. Uh, we only do Fridays if it's kind of like one of us can't make it. So, um, yeah. Obviously, yeah, we'll, we'll do Thursday. I think. Yeah, obviously, I hope everybody has a great New Year's, you know, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. You have any plans, Jez, for New Year's, or is it just going to be. Nope. Hopefully, gaming. But, Hopefully gaming. you know, yeah. sometimes I, I don't get to decide what I do with my life, apparently. Yeah. So, there is that. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna be trying to finish uh, Pokemon and then get on Witcher three. But uh, just just pray uh, pray my back gets better because uh, it twinges a little bit here and there. So uh, well wishes for my back to get better. <laughs> well wishes, Please. baby. So thank you guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. Later. <laughs>